I will show you how to create this environment in Unreal Engine 5 step by step. If you are a beginner in Unreal Engine and want to learn how to create game environments, then this video is for you. We will start from the very basics to knowing how to navigate, create landscapes and add in models. I will not only teach you how to use the engine, but I will show you art fundamentals that you can apply to improve to any kind of environment you create. You will learn materials, landscape and set dressing techniques. And we will also learn how to modify scan data models in real time and create dynamic objects using blueprints and Niagara systems to give life to our environment. Finally, we will create a small cinematic that we can use to showcase our environment. Learning to make great games is hard as hell. Learn with us at unfgames.com to make it easier. So I'm gonna start creating my project, go to games, go to third person because I like third person games. And here I'm just gonna call it my secret temple, something, something like that, okay? Do not include starter content, we don't really need it. Do not put ray tracing, this is for games, and then click create. Okay, so the first thing you're gonna see is this big window. This big window is called the viewport, okay? So the first thing we're gonna learn is how to navigate in the viewport. So by using the mouse, the right mouse click, you can rotate the camera around, okay? So the way I like to navigate here is by holding the right mouse click, I can use the W to go forward, the S to go back, and the A or the D to go left and right, okay? And just by using the combination of those, I can just move around like I'm in a spaceship or something like that, which is pretty cool. It's like playing a game, right? So this is my preferred method of navigating, but there are other methods too. So you can also, by holding right click, you can E to go up and Q to go down. Okay, if you want to go up and down, you can do that. Now, if you hold the left mouse click and you move the mouse, you will also like fly something like that. Okay, so by holding the left mouse click and moving the mouse, you will fly. Notice that I don't have much control over the direction of the up and down. So I still need to use my Q and E keys while I'm holding it. Okay. The next one is the middle mouse click. By holding it, you will pan around just like this, okay? Only in two directions, depending on where the camera is looking at, okay? And uh, the next thing you're gonna learn is how to select objects. So here, by default, you will have this map because we created that third person template. So if I want to play the game, I can just play here. And just by going here, I can play my game by pressing WASD as usual. You can jump, etc. And if you want to stop the game, notice that I don't see the mouse anymore. You can just press escape. Okay, so this is basically the viewport. So how do you select things? Well, you can just click here and it will highlight with a yellow outline the object that you have selected. Okay. If you want to focus on this object, you can press F. And now what you can do is by holding Alt and left mouse click, you can rotate around this object, just like that. Let's say I want another object, I can just press F, Alt, left mouse click, and I will rotate around. If you want to zoom in and out, holding Alt and right mouse click, you will zoom out and zoom in, all right? Okay, so what else you can do? Well, you can do a bunch of operations here. You can move objects, rotate them, or scale them. This is where you have here the select options, okay? So if you have here, you will see that select objects is by pressing Q, move objects by pressing W, you will have this gizmo, E to rotate, and R to scale. So if I press this one, I can just move the object, move into axis okay i can click here to rotate and this one to scale in different axes to make it bigger or smaller okay now i don't i never click here to be honest 
uh, because it's very standard to use W, E, R, okay, and Q to select. So W, you will move, E, you will rotate, R, you will scale. That's it. The next thing is the work coordinates. So by default, as you can see here, the gizmo is exactly the same as this one here. Here you have a little gizmo here. Okay, so you can see that the Y axis in the world coordinates, it's always pointing into this direction. However, there are some cases where you want to move the object into the direction of the normal. So what you can do is you click here, and now this will be in local space. So now I can just move this around, and depending when I, where I rotate it, I will have like different axes, okay? The next thing is, let's go back to the work position. The next thing is the grid. Uh, by default, it's on. Uh, you can change how many units you want to snap with. So for example, I want 100. I can just come here and I will snap 100 units. Okay, let me go back to 10. And if I remove this, I won't snap to anything, which is great if you want to decorate organic environments. The next one is the rotation snapping so if i rotate here you will see that i snap to 10 degrees each rotation okay i can also change it like 45 each one if i want it okay let's go back to 10 and if i click here i won't uh, snap to any kind of angle and the last one of course is the scale snapping right uh, and if i click here i won't snap to any scale in particular if I click here, let's say one, I will all, always snap in one unit, okay? Now, I'm not sure if you notice, but let's go back here to, to this one. I'm not sure if you notice, but as I change things here, things on the right are changing. In my case, it's changing these properties. So this is the property panel, and it's extremely useful. So basically, each actor here, which is any object you can put in the world, have different properties, okay? By default, all of them have the location, the rotation, and the scale. Because, you know, there need to be a position for them in the world. So let's say I just want to move this. I can use these handles, or I can use this one here to move along the y-axis, move along the x-axis, move along the z-axis, just like that. I can also rotate like this in different axes if I want it, and I can scale it like this. Now, notice that my scale, it's only doing it in one direction, okay? I can type the value here, let's say I can put one again, and what I can do is click on the log icon, and now when I change one, all of them will change at the same time, which is usually what you want. So otherwise your object will be a stretch. A little bit is fine, but not too much. So as you continue to go down, you will see other properties of this actor. In this case, this is a static mesh. So what is a static mesh is basically a 3D object that you import into Unreal or you create inside of it. Okay, so we will look more into this in the future. The next one is the material. It's basically the paint color you have. You can go here and change it, like for example, this one, and you will change the color of your cube. And the rest one is physics options, okay? And some other general properties that most actors of this kind have, okay? So this is the details panel, okay? If you don't see it, press F4 and you will be good to go. The next one is the outliner and we will finish the introduction with this. So with the outliner, you will see all the actors here. Okay. If I click on this one, you will see that it highlights one actor. Okay. I can do a lot of operations here. For example, I can press F2 to rename this to my tooth. And I just rename this actor to make it easier to find. Okay, I can go up like this and create a new folder if I want it, like my new 
folder and put a name here. And I can just put actors here if I want, like for example, this one I can put here, okay? And basically you can do mods operations. You can delete one if you want by pressing the delete key. And that's pretty much all you can do. The rest of the things we will take a look later. Uh, what I want to show you now, it's that there are different ways to check the viewport, okay? So by default is the lit options, which is when the lights are on and is basically what your game will look like. But there are other ones that you can put like unlit mode to check the colors, wireframe to check the wireframe, detail lining to check the, the lining with the normals and everything and lining only. Those are the most common ones. As you can see, they have a shortcut with Alt4, Alt3, Alt2, Alt5, and Alt6. And you can just toggle between this, uh, this mouse by pressing Alt4 and Alt3, which is basically what I will do. Okay. And the next one is optimization view modes. We won't cover this right now. We will take a look at that later. But just by that, you're pretty much good to go. There are some other little things here, uh, but for the most part, uh, by knowing this small little stuff, you should be able to uh, move around in a real engine and move objects and everything. Okay. So what I will do now is to create my level. Okay. So I will control space to open the content browser here. Okay. This is a way to just have it here. You can also go to window content browser. Uh, you can have many of them. If you have like multiple monitors, you can just select one of those if you want. And now what I can do is to right click here on content, create new folder. And I will call this my secret temple, something like that. Okay. And just by doing that, what I will do is to create another folder here called levels. Okay, so I have my secret temple and my levels. So basically what the content browser is, it's a, it's, it is what it is. You can just see the assets that you have here. You can just drag things here. Like for example, you can just drop this mesh and you can put it here and you can have textures and everything. You will have, you will have all that content here organized. So the last thing I want to do is to go here to file new level and you will see a bunch of options like open world, empty open world, basic and empty level. Uh, for us, we will just create the empty level. Do not save this. I don't really want to save the changes I did here. And now you will see a black screen. So what you will do is control S to save this, go to your secret temple levels, and let's call it secret temple map. Save it. And now we are good to go to start creating our game environment. So now that we have our black screen, you should feel a little bit nervous if you see this for the first time. So we're going to add some lights so that we have like a nice blue sky so that we don't feel uh, a little bit claustrophobic. Okay. So there are many ways to add this. And here I will introduce you to the place tab where you can just click here and you can drag different actors here. And as you can see, you have the lights. So if I can drop a directional light, I can go here and add a skylight. Then I can go here, go to visual effects, add the sky atmosphere. As you can see we're starting to, uh, you know, have something now. All these actors here, uh, you know, I already know that these ones are the ones I need to have my, uh, you know, my sky set up, but there is a easier way to do this. So I will delete all of them. And what I will do is to go to window and then go here to the environment light mixer. And just by doing that, we have a window here where we can create different lights. So here we can just click here, create a skylight, create atmospheric light. Uh, 
you don't need to create another atmosphere like i don't i still don't know why they put it uh create sky atmosphere create volumetric cloud create fog okay and just like that we have our setup now you could go here and just come back and then just go to visual effects drag the fog then drag the clouds and you will have the same result now one last thing i want to do is to change the properties of this one so if i go to my skylight you will see that i have a check for real-time capture i'm gonna check that and just like that now my skylight is using real-time capture which is what we want to have like the global illumination on real time the next thing is my exponential height fog i'm gonna go here and put some volumetric fog and as you can see everything feels more volumetric so i will go up and here in the density i will reduce it a little bit okay so one thing uh, before we start we're gonna create a small landscape here so we're gonna go here to select mode and you will see that i have like different modes here we will go through some of them in this tutorial but for now by default you're always in the select mode which is select items uh, move them duplicate them etc so the next one we're gonna add is the landscape so we're gonna click here and now you will have a bunch of options here the first thing is that you will see this green area here okay now if you look it from this angle it will seem like hey it, this that's very small actually but in reality it's kind of big okay so if you really want to make sure that like you have like enough resolution and everything you can here to the sections per component and you can put the two by two section okay and the enable edit layers we're just not gonna click this uh, for now uh, we're gonna keep it simple and then we're gonna click create okay so now we have our landscape and we can do a bunch of things here okay uh, we're gonna take a look at the landscape later but for now let me go here to my select mode you can see that i have a shortcut for this shift 2 shift 1 i can either click here if i go to my landscape shift 2 shift 1 shift 3 to go to different modes okay so i go to shift 1 my select mode and i'm going here if i click play you will see that i will play in the position where my camera is so if i go here and i hit play my player player will start here and i don't want that i want my player to start at a certain position so in order to do that we just go in here to the place go to basic and here i will have a player start i can just drag it here now you see that the players start here have an arrow okay so this arrow is the direction where that player is pointing if i hit play i will look into this direction so uh what i want to do is to just rotate a little bit and let's put the snap Control c to go back and put it here and now my player is looking into this direction now let's see if this is like the position we want it's okay as you can see the player is super small and our landscape is super big okay so now that we have this let's start adding you know some content so we can have our level here to play with so now that we have our player here we just need to sculpt something in our landscape to have like a little pad our player can play with so to scope on our landscape we need to go to a landscape mode go here to the select mode and change it to the landscape you can also press shift 2 if you want and now you have this sculpt tab and the paint tab we're gonna focus on the sculpt one okay so what you can do with sculpt is you can change the brush size here to make it smaller or bigger you can change the fall off to make it smoother or harsher or you can change the tool strength to you know add the intensity to your brush so let's see what the sculpt mode does we can just come here and just by doing that by clicking we're sculpting something now i feel like the strength is a little bit so too much so i will reduce it and if i want to lower it i can just click Control, sorry shift 
and with shift I will uh, do the inverse operations. For example, I can come here with shift and I can just go down. Okay. Another thing I can do is go use the smooth options. I can just smooth this thing out just like that. And I can do the same here and it, it will smooth the surface. Another thing I can do is to sculpt something here and then use the flatten tool. So the flatten tool will flatten everything here to have everything on the same level. For example, like this one can have something like this. It's pretty useful for like if you want to create cities or something like that, you want all the surface to be very flat. And of course you can increase the intensity and you can remove it just by just by doing this. So what we're going to use now to create our path is a ramp. So we're going to create something like we start from here and we end up like here, maybe. Okay. And we're going to go up a little bit. Also, we're going to increase the fall off to make it really smooth and also the width of the ramp. So by clicking enter, you will see that I have like a small little hill here. I don't want to do that. So what I want to do is to go up a little bit more. Remember, press Ctrl C to undo what your operation. Okay. And if you want to have a bigger number than this, you can just go for 16,000, for example. Okay. And now you will have a huge RAM that you can play with just by going here. Then go click enter. And now you will have a small RAM here. Okay. So. Now that you have this, what you can do is to smooth everything out, just like this. Okay. And now we have like a small little pad, which is much more interesting than, you know, just a flat plane, which is what we want. Okay. So I can continue to sculpt this. Like, for example, I can do the pad, like go to the landscape, do go to my flatten tool. And here I can just create something like this where I can extend this ramp uh, into the horizon where you know it's something like that and I can increase increase the brush size like this and I can just do something like this for example and just by doing that we have like a small little ramp here okay and then we have like just the main pad we can smooth this one out so it can be less harsh. And just like that, we have like a small little terrain we can play with. Let's try to play our game to feel the size. It looks okay to me. So the next thing uh, I want to do is to drag some meshes so we can have some, um, some rocks here and everything. So we can close the gameplay space for our player. And we're going to do that with Mega Scans. Okay, so it's time to add some rocks into our environment. So what we will do is to use Quixel Mega Scans to add assets to our scene. And it's going to be very easy. We just need to control space here, go to add, and then go to add Quixel content. If it's the first time you see this window, you may need to log in here. I'm already logging, so I don't need to. And you will have like like a browser where you can just select like materials, 3D models and everything. So those are great tools to use for your game if you want to decorate it. For myself, I'm just going here to the 3D assets and I'm just going to find some rocks like this. Okay. So how can I drag this, these rocks? Well, I can basically choose one of these, for example, this one. Okay. And I can choose the version here down in the right. I can ch choose a low quality, medium quality, the nanite version, and I can continue uh, to choose which versions I want. In my case, I want the nanite one. If I click download, it will take a while to download. But so there is a better way to do this. And that is by just dragging this into our world here. And there you go. Now you have your asset. Now, what you have here, it's the latest version, uh, basically for the 
it will start with the smallest version possible something like this okay so let's just put this one here and remove the snapping so we can rotate it a little bit let's play our game so our player is too far from this so let's go here and put him here okay and as i'm working with this mega scan the bridge is also downloading the asset so i don't need to take care of you know um i don't need to wait for the asset to download to place it i can just continue to place this asset here by alt and clicking i will duplicate this asset and i can just put it here if i want it i can also multiply by minus one the scale if you want something different you can put minus one here and this will basically flip the the mesh something like that okay and you, you can do that if you want okay let's try to track another one you can see it's finished so it will take a while to change the version okay let's see which one else we want to add so for example this massive stone cliff i have it here we can just go here and drag it into position save it and then control yeah, three press e to rotate and let's create some nice big rocks here i can duplicate this one i can rotate like this and if i want i can do the same trick i can multiply by minus one and I can have like a mirror version. Something like that. Looks really nice combined. I can also combine it like this. I can remove the snapping of the scale. And then by pressing R, I can just make it taller. And nobody will notice. Okay. Now just by doing that, we have something really nice going on here. It's a really nice silhouette. What you're trying to accomplish when dragging these meshes is just not drag and drop. You want to have something interesting, something like this, right? You don't want like a square or something like that. That's not a good way to go. Let's track another one. Let's see. Maybe this one looks like a nice one we could use. This one, I believe we already use it. Or maybe this one. I'm not sure. Let's see. So this one we used before. Let's track this one. So let's track this one here. Save it. And let's put it here in position and now we have we can make it smaller if we want it just like that okay and you could overlap these meshes like this so that this part that is the same mesh like you are kind of hiding it okay so let's let's go back uh if you wanted to do that you could definitely hide some repetition that for me, I feel like this one is good enough. I can scale it like this a little bit and put it into position and then go try to find another one. For example, this one, you can drag the nanite, put it here, save it, and then rotate it, make it big. There you go something like that okay so we will play our game based on this angle and we need something uh, that it's you know feels massive and right now we don't have many many small meshes so what i will do is to basically go here and copy all these meshes and we will put it here and just by doing that we are enclosing our area of gameplay where you know player will know they cannot play here we can come here and rotate a little bit if we want it something like that okay and if this one looks too similar we can always come here and break it a little bit we can always make it big like this and 
just by duplicating these meshes, we don't really need to place them again. We can just hold Alt and click and continue to do so. We can scale it if we want until we have closed the path, okay? Now, um, I feel like we lack some verticality, so what I will do is to go to save everything first, okay? And then go to the landscape, and then go to the smooth, and let's sculpt something here, okay? And if your Unreal goes really slow, it's because the meshes are loading, so you just need to wait a little bit. Okay, so the assets finish downloading, and uh, before I sculpt here, I want to show you how it looks like if I go to lead, click on wireframe, you will see that now I have the wireframe version, and everything updated uh, nicely, okay? So what I can do now is just go to landscape, and you know, just sculpt something here, we can just re decrease the brush size, and then come here, and maybe we could do something like this, put a flatten tool like this, and then do the smooth one, smooth everything, and then do a ramp from here to here, reduce the size of the ramp, make it a little bit harsher, just like this, okay? There you go, press enter, nice. Now we can smooth this transition, and we can go here and smooth this transition again, Awesome. So now you have like a small little line that points out in this direction. You can also go to the erosion. And what you can do here is reduce the threshold. And just by clicking here, let's reduce the strength too. So the threshold a little bit. There you go. Maybe the threshold not so low. Something like that. You can start adding some erosion. You can put something like 30. And this will add more erosion. So you can just smooth this out. Something like that. If you want it. Okay. Now this adds a lot of verticality and direction to our scene. And I kind of like it. So I'm just going to keep smoothing things out here. Okay, and I can do the same here. I can do the ramp from here to here. And I can just go up if I want it. Okay, there you go. And now I can just smooth things out. Just like that. And I can sculpt here if I want it. I can increase the strength. And I can just sculpt some things here. There you go. Something like that. And I can, of course, smooth it. So I can have like a different result, something like that. So now what I'm, what I'm having, I'm having these two lines here that are helping me to have a direction in my scene. One is pointing this direction, the other one is pointing this direction. Okay. So before continuing to add more things, let's decide where we want our focal point. I feel like I want it here. So what I want want to do is to duplicate these ones and just make them really big, something like that. Uh, really, really big. And I can go here to the bridge and add another one. Uh, for example, I could add uh, one of the very thin ones, such as this one. I really like this one. So we can just drag this one and put it here, save it. And let's just say our, you know, our statue will be here. So what we need to do is to basically create something really, really, really big. But in order for something to be really, really big, there must be some things that are really, really small so that we can compare. Okay. So by duplicating this, let's first uh, close this gap. So that we have something like this, okay? And then let's see which other asset we can add. Perhaps this one. Maybe this one is a good one for us. We can just come here. 
This one is pretty big, so let's just put them in position. And let's try to place it in the background here. So we also have other sense of directionality. Can go here, make it big, just like that. And basically move it a little bit, something like that. So that we, from distance, can take a look at this, like this, something like that. And now what we're having it's more lines. If we check our composition here, uh, we're having one line here, one line here, and another one that is like this. So this is the area where our focal point will be. Therefore, um, let me undo this one. Our silhouette, um, let me put it in another color. The silhouette here must be really interesting. Right now, it's just a square, which is exactly what we don't want. So we're going to change that by adding some hero pieces here. And once we lock down the hero piece, it will be a piece of cake to finish this environment. So what I will do now, and while these ones uh, are preparing to change for the Nanite version, uh, I will show you how to download other 3D models for free that you cannot get inside of Bridge. So if you're looking for more models that you cannot find in Quicksail Bridge, Sketchfab is a great way to find 3D models. For example, I can just go and find a statue here, type a statue, and what you will look for is these ones that have the download symbol here. I don't know if you can see it here. This is the download symbol. It's like this. Okay, also you have one here, one here. This means you can download them. Okay, so if you click here, uh, it will open a new window here where you can just check the model here. And if you want, you can download the model here. You can download the original format, in this case it's Blender, uh, but some others will be like an OBJ or FBX, depending on the person who upload this model. You can also save to a collection, for example, I can add to. And then I can go for, for example, architecture assets. And I can create a new collection. I can go to my collections here in my profile. And you will see that I have a bunch of favorite ones. Okay. So for my case, um, what I want to do is to download the asset. Um, I want to download this one. I feel like it's great. It has a lot of triangles. And we will put it as a hero piece for our environment, okay? So, as you can see, it has a lot of detail, everything. So, what I will do is to click here, download. Click here, download original format. And this will start downloading this. I already have it. So, let's see how we can import this into Unreal. So, now that I have the file, I can just right-click, extract here. And this will extract the model. If you go to the source here, I, I believe you need to extract here again. Okay, and there you go. You got some textures that I don't think we will use. And then we got the 3D model. So what we're looking for is a 3D model. So let's go back to Unreal. Then control space. And before I continue, these folders here, uh, let me open a new window here so you can take a look. These folders here, Megascans and Megascans presets, are new, are automatically added when I add my Megascans, okay? So if you are unsure where this came from, this came automatically when we download our models. So what we will do is to go to our secret temple, then let's create a new folder called uh, Scans, maybe, and then double click here, Import, then go to the folder we had it, and let, let's just click here. And it will import the model, okay? And it will ask you for some properties. So basically what you want is you don't want to build a nanite jet because we don't know the size of this model. Uh, create new materials. Do not create materials. You don't really need it for now. <laughs> and import the textures, we're also not going to import the texture. So 
just by doing that, we're just going to click import and it will import our model. Okay, so our model has been imported. I get this message log that um, there are some errors here, some warnings, just ignore them. So here, what we can do is to drag this asset here. And as you can see, it's extremely small, okay? And we don't really want that. So what we need to do in order to Nanite to work properly, we need a right size for this. So the first thing is I'm going to rotate this 90 degrees. Let me control C and put the snapping on. Let me put this in 90 degrees, just like that. And now what I need to do is to scale it. Let's scale it, I don't know, let's say by five, maybe, maybe 10, maybe 15. Okay, so 15 looks like a good size. Uh, now that we have this, we need to freeze the transform because if we drag another one, it will also stay small. As you can see here, the numbers are one in the scale and the rotation is still zero. But this one, on the other hand, has like 15 in scale. So we want the 15 to be the new default value. And we're going to do that by going to the modeling tab. Now, there are a bunch of options here that you can do to do operations inside 3D models in Unreal. We have a complete tutorial on that. So if you want to learn more about these tools, make sure to check it out. But for us, we're just going here to the transform and then click bake rotation and scale. And if you take a look at this part of the window in the right left uh, right corner, we can just click accept and you will see that everything uh, will go back to default. The rotation will go back to zero and the scale uh, will go back to one. And there you go. So now that we have this, if we drag this model and we put it into the map, now this is the default size. Now that we have this, now we can just go here and this is the static mesh editor with alt and left click. You can just rotate around to take a look at how your 3D model looks like. In this part of the window, you have the materials where you can see which materials is using. We will work on that later on. But what you want is to click here on enable Nanite support. And when you click here, just use the recommended settings, click apply, and it will apply Nanite version to, to this model. So now this model that has 700,000 triangles, it will be optimized to use virtualized geometry. And now you can see this change and now that this one is using Nanite, while still has a lot of polygons, now it's optimized to run for games. So now we can come here to our focal point and we can get very creative. We can scale it like maybe 15. 15 looks like a good number. We can, we can try it out. Okay, maybe a little more, 20. Yeah, 20 looks like a nice number. Let's try 22, 21. Okay. Let's, let's put it like this. I think this size, this rotation is fine. Remove the snapping. Okay. And let's put it down a little bit. Okay. So now this will be my focal point. So now that this is my focal point, I need the light to uh, have my focal point here more interesting. So what I can do is to go to the directional light here that we create and we can change the rotation here on maybe on Y or maybe on C. Okay. And just by doing that, we're having more lights into our main subject. Now, what I will do is press F11. And instead of using these controllers, I can use con press control L. And I can rotate the sand like this so I can have my focal point with lights. So what you're looking for here, it's basically 
you're looking to have some interesting shadows and lights like shadow here shadow here shadow here shadow here and then you can have some interesting lights in this part like this okay so whatever you have a light and a shadow this is what we call contrast and contrast is what will make your focal point more interesting if we remove the light here and we put something like this we reduce the contrast and we don't really want that so what we will do is to put some light lights like this something like that where it's like coming from you know this direction and this thing is being lit now if you want you can change all these meshes here you can put them here just like that and now what we will do is to try and change these meshes because if i go here go to buffer and go to specular this is a very uh, fun way to check the silhouette this is the silhouette of my scene and what i have here is basically a cube you know and it's not really interesting so let's go back with alt 4 to the lead mode what we will do next is to play with the position of this rock so we can have an interesting silhouette in our focal point so before we continue to refine our focal point we will change the lining a little bit let's press ctrl l and let's see if we can have something more interesting maybe if the lights come from the other side something like that we will have more interesting shadows not only in our focal point but also in the in the ground you see i i have some shadows in the ground here so as i continue to rotate you can have more interesting shadows here something like that let's see if we can put this one like this there you go much better so now our focal point is shining okay and what we need to do is to basically move these things around so if you want to save the location of your camera press ctrl 1 or any number you want for example ctrl 1 here and ctrl 2 here so now that i press those if i press 1 and 2 i can just toggle between different views so i can just come back here and this one i think i can delete it okay let me hide this one okay so i can move this one like this i can also rotate like this and multiply by minus one here so i can have something different yeah something like that and i can just put it here There you go, something like that, where you have like this nice silhouette. You can also rotate this part if you want it. Okay, there you go. Let's see if we can grab another asset, for example, this one. Okay, uh, what will happen if we rotate this one around? Let's just, let's just try to imagine a little bit. We can come here. And we can rotate this like this, maybe. Who knows? Let's just let's just put it here. Not here, actually. Maybe here. We can form a, like a kind of triangle here with these meshes. Maybe it's a bad idea, but I don't know. It works the try. Okay, it's a. It's not a really good idea. Just a tiny bit of it. Okay, what if we remove this? Yeah, we we really don't want this one. Uh, what else we can put? Well, we can we can grab these ones, the the smaller ones, and we can put them here. We can make them bigger too, something like that. And with that, uh, actually, I really like the silhouette here that we created. So let's not, you know remove this i really like this one so we're gonna keep it okay um when we put meshes let's not try to remove the work we have done before we can grab something like this to make like a transition and then we can come here and maybe grab some other 
smaller meshes here or maybe something like this maybe it can work so let's wrap this one and just by dragging this here you also you see that i already have the nanite version i can just come here and i can go here to the local and i can scale this just like this so i can have something like that maybe i like it maybe i don't so let's just move it around here there you go much better i feel like this feels much better in my opinion let's just come back here and do the same but this this time we're gonna scale it like this and rotate it around just something like that okay something something like that so we don't have this huge space occupying the screen uh we can come here also and just put this one at distance here if we want it okay it looks like something's here and I, I don't want it to be here uh yeah this one uh i hide it by mistake shouldn't be that part okay we can actually scale this like and to make it like super big and then we can just put it in the distance here and just by doing that what i'm doing is creating some tension here let me explain what it is a little bit so let's multiply by minus 10 here let's rotate a little bit here and put it in position here so as soon as i do that i'm blocking the way because there is a line coming up here and now this one is blocking the eye so that's not a good decision so it's better to put it here but if i put it here my silhouette is disturbed and i no longer have the silhouette i want if i go here to my buffer visualization and then go to specular you will see that my silhouette is lost as soon as i hide this you will see that my silhouette is much more interesting so at this point uh you don't you don't really want to uh you know uh, mess up with the silhouette everything you need to do is to help the silhouette to shine you know so now that we have this um i feel like i want to try just a little bit more like maybe this one so and this is the last one we will try so as soon as we do this we can come here and scale it a little bit much better i think although this shadow here i really like so i don't really want to remove the shadow if we go to the lid uh, lining only you can see that as i decrease this uh, i have a shadow here that i i really like so let's not put this one here maybe we can try to put it in another position such as this one for example we can put it like this and this one looks like a nice asset to put as a directional asset something that grabs the attention when we look at it we kind of have like a sense of directionality here which we don't have with this one so um let's let's remove this one uh, what we're gonna do is to keep duplicating this one it end up being really 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 good asset to us okay let's put another one here and let's see if we get the same results here you can just come here And just by rotating this and we can also make it like really big if we want it uh but let's just make it smaller here now you have equal space between these rocks here like this space and this space and this space is pretty much the same so what you can do is to reduce the size of this and make it a little bit like this and now this one a little bit taller and now you're having something 
like much more interesting. Alternatively, you can just go here and just make it go down a little bit, just like that. Okay, so let's play our game to see how it feels like. So now you can see that um, all these directionalities are helping us to have like something like a nice focal point here. Let me play with the light a little bit to see if I can have another source of light. So this one is fine. Uh, let's continue to use the one we had before. Let's, let's go here. Something like that. Okay, so now that we have this, uh, we can play some smaller assets because when we play this, uh, yeah, it feels big, but it can feel bigger. And the reason is we don't have any small assets. And at this point, I feel like my focal point is working really, really well. Uh, all the lines are directing to this asset. And here we have a very interesting silhouette. Uh, if we take a look at this part, like this, we go to the buffer, specular, we have a really nice, interesting silhouette. Without this one, it's still interesting, but, you know, just by doing these tricks, we can increase the quality of our composition. Before continuing to add more details to our scene, there is a problem with the shadows, and... This is because Nanite doesn't work really well with uh, with the open faces, uh, Lumen or Nanite. I don't know which one of those. And if you're watching this from the future, maybe this is already fixed and skip this part. If not, um, an easy way to solve this problem, right? This should be pure shadow. We can just go here, make sure you go to the local axis okay and now we can just alt click to duplicate and then if you want to mirror you can mirror in the y axis by going here you can multiply by minus one so you can make sure you have the same value with that and just like that we have solved the problem so we can come here again and duplicate and then duplicate by minus one Okay, kind of solve this one. Let's go to the next one. Minus one. Let's go to the next one. Minus one here. You don't need to multiply if it's already one. Because, you know, it's very easy to get the value. But this one, you can multiply by minus one. And it's really handy to be, uh, really handy to make this kind of math operations inside Unreal. So you don't need to think about like what to what to put. You don't need to copy the numbers and everything. Everything just works just fine. So we can duplicate this one, multiply by minus one. Okay, let's go back here again. And this one should be good to go because this one really doesn't need it. But just in case, we will put it here like minus one. And this one also, just in case, minus one here. Okay, so now that we have this, this is a solid piece. So now we can decide better. Let's press F11 to make the scene bigger. And we can place the lights in place where there is more interesting shadows. Such as this one, for example. What do we want to create here? Let's go to the lining only or the detail lining. We want to create shapes. So we're creating this shape using the shadow here and we're merging it with this part. So everything here is a shape. And the other thing we're creating is different shapes. We're creating some shapes here with the shadows here and a lot of more shapes here, which is a contrast. Okay. So this one, it's also been merged. And then we have the light area, which is basically this part here, this part here. And this is basically our design, design matrix. We need to 
decide like if this one looks good then when we add more details it will be more interesting so let's just play with the light a little bit to see which angle help us the best maybe this one let's just go back to the other one i feel it's much better in any case we can change in change it anytime so now that we fix this problem this is a very common problem if you are using our real engine 5.0 maybe in the future version this is fixed but for now it's not so now we're going to add some materials to this landscape so that we can think about how we can blend this environment better so in order to make our landscape material first we need some textures so we're going to bridge here and if you go home you can find surfaces here which is basically textures okay so here you can just put anything you want okay in my case i want to search for sand and you will have other subcategories that you can filter your search and then you can just choose any one you like in my case i will choose this one okay and if i want to look for other similar textures i can just scroll down here and you will see a window called related assets and here i can find other ones that are similar to the one i just add and i will just download them in medium quality okay i already did that okay i just went here and just download in a medium quality i don't need the super high resolution i, I don't feel like i need it so I'm going for these textures here, these four textures, the rippled sand, the beach sand, another type of sand, and some rock. So let's add them in the project. So let's add, let's start from the right to the left. Let's click add. And just by doing that, we have our material here. That's great. Okay. Close it here. Uh, we will look into more textures and materials later, but for now, you just need to know that you have a color, a normal map to add the detail, and a mask that we will take a look at that later. Okay, so all our surfaces will be here. For example, I import another one here just to try some things. So let's keep adding the textures we just download here. Click here, add. Click here, add. And you're good to go. Now, what we need to do is to create our landscape material. And we're going to set it, set it up very, very simple at the beginning. So we're going to the secret temple. We're going to right click new folder and call materials. Go here and then right click and go to material. And with this, we will create a material for the landscape. Therefore, I will name it M underscore landscape. Uh, I don't know, sand, something like that, okay? So double click on this one, drag the window here and you can snap it here, okay? So what you can do is to drag these textures here, okay? Now, before I continue, very easy, you can just right click here to move around the material editor. Here you have a preview of the material and you have some properties here. If you want to learn more about materials, we have a complete course on material creation. But for now, I will focus on the landscape material. Okay, so I will go to the content browser and then I will look into this sense. Let's drop everything here. Okay. And let's try to put it into the landscape. Okay, so how can we do that? If we go here to the landscape mode, then go to paint, you will see that here you have target layers and then you have some layers here. So if you put the layers here, normally you should have like sand, you have like rocks, uh, grass, another type of rock, and you can have like five, six, seven, eight, uh, anything you want here. So we need a way to tell the landscape that we are using the sand here, which is this one. The first thing is I'm going to grab all these textures and in the left side where you have the properties, I can just change this sample source from texture asset to shared wrap. 
Without going into too much detail, what this will help me is to allow me to put much more textures than what the material actually allows me to put. Like, instead of 16, I will have a lot more than that. Now, what we will need is to create a material inside here. So I will right click and go to Make Material Attributes. And just like that, we're creating our first material. Let's drag this here, the color here. It's sorry, this is not the color. This is the the mask. So let's come back here and alt click to remove the wires, connect this to the base color, connect this to the normal map, and then connect this. The red go to the ambient occlusion and the green go to the roughness. How do I know that? If I click here, you will open the texture editor and you can toggle here between the red, green and blue channels. If I go to the red one, you will see that you have the shadows here, which means this is the ambient occlusion. If I go to the green one, you will see the roughness here. This is how reflective the surface is. And if I go to the blue one, you will see a height map. So combine the three of those, I have this weird color texture. But I know that these channels represent the ambient occlusion and the roughness, so I will leave it like that. Okay, so we're going to create a landscape uh, layer. So let's create landscape and then we will go here and we will go to landscape layer blend. And as soon as we do this, we have an array of elements. We can just click the plus icon, go here, and then I can name the first layer L1, which is my layer one. I can just connect this one. And then how do I connect this? Well, I can just, because this is a material here, okay? All this is a material. I'm connecting to a material, but I only have one node. So what I wanna do is to click here and then go to use material attributes. And now I can connect this one. Click apply. Save it. And now we will apply the landscape material here. We will just click on the landscape. And in the properties here, if you scroll down, you will see a landscape material. We can just go back to the content browser here, browse to our materials folder, click on the material, and then click here in the arrow. And this will make sure we have the material. Now, everything turned black. And the reason is we have until the landscape uh, to assign this layer, you know, this texture into this layer. So we need to create a layer info by going to the landscape, go to the paint mode and then click on the plus icon. Then I can just click here on weight blended layer and it will allow me to save this asset in a default location. Usually it's in the levels where your level is and it will create a subfolder. You can just save this. And now that I have done that, I have my asset here, which is extremely small. So what I want to do is to change the properties of this material and by using materials, and then I will add other materials here that I can use. So let's deal with the size of this texture here that it looks like a solid color, but in reality, you know, it's sand. So what we're gonna do is to come here, okay? And then I will create a basic setup I use for all the textures. I can just right click and type texture coordinate. I can also press U if I want. Then I can tap and type multiply, connect this two, and then go here and type constant. Okay. So what this does, and I'm going to change it to one. So what this does is grab a coordinate. Okay, and multiplies it, and then we connect this one to the UVs. And just by doing that, we're having UV control. Now, one, it's a little bit too big. I'm going for something like 0 0.05. Okay, let's apply it. And then let's go back here. Now you can see it's a little bit different. Okay, so that's great. Like we have our sand going into this direction. Let's take a look at the size. Maybe this is a little bit too big. Uh, for me, uh, I feel like 
I want to change it a little bit. So what we need to do is to create a material instance. So we're going to the content browser, going to the folder, materials, and then right click here and then go to create material instance. So we will create this and then call it MI landscape inst, something like that, or just landscape sand base. Okay, so now we need to apply this material instance here. So what we will do is to click this arrow here. While we select an item on the content browser, we can click on the arrow and then it will put the material in the in the right place okay so now what you can do is to go to your material because if you open this you will see that you have no parameters so you need to create a parameter and the way to do that is by right clicking here and then convert to parameter and let's call this l1 highly and that's it we don't need any other parameter so let's just click apply go to your secret temple map and now we can drag this window and we can play with the size for example I can multiply by two if I want it smaller and this looks a little bit better uh, maybe uh, let's m divide by 1.5 okay so that's a little bit better. Now, it looks really flat, and that's okay, because we're going to add more meshes uh, later. But for now, uh, what we're going to do next is to create the rest of the materials. Now, let's add more texture to this landscape. So, just the same way we create this one, we can just copy and paste this and do it like four times. So we're, I'm going to just copy this and paste this, and then I'm going to start swapping the textures. OK, so um, if you want to organize yourself a little bit, you can just grab all of this and press C and type L1, for example, like layer one. This will be my C L2. So the first thing is change the tiling. So I will put like L2 tiling. Okay, then if you want to change this texture, we can just come here, go to mega scans, surfaces, and we use this one. So we're going to use the second one here. I'm going to grab here, control space, and put the arrow there, control space, and put the arrow there. And there you go. There you go, the layer two. Let's go control C and control V. And this one will be my layer tree. And this one will be my layer tree tiling. Okay. And now I'm going to start changing these textures. Control space. Check the other texture here. Control space here. Check another texture. And then do the same one for this. Grab everything. Control C. Control V. Rename this to L4. And now this one will be my L4 tiling. And then go here and start changing the textures. This one is not. Uh, um, should be this one. So let's go here. Let's go here too. And then let's go here. There you go. So uh, now we have our four layers. We need to add an element here. For each one of those layers, we're going to uh, leave it like that and put L2. I'm going to do it uh, two more times. So that index number two will be my layer three. And my index number three will be my layer four. Now, I could just connect these ones like this, but there is a better way. And if your graph is a little bit big, uh, this way will help you to organize it a little bit. You will just drag here and type name, and this will be like a rerouting node. So this one will be my L1. So now let me Alt click here, okay? And let me just grab here and put a name and name it L2. And what you will see here is that I can just type L1, and now I will get a reference from this, like this one's like, I don't know, like wireless 
con uh, it's connected, but you don't need to have the wires. So now I just go here and type L2 and connect this one here. And then do the same for the rest of this. Put a name here, type L3. Drag this one, put a name and type L4. Okay, and now that I have this, I can just move this up and then type L3, type L4, pressing tap. And just like that, we have connect everything here. Now let's try it out. Let's just click apply. Okay, and let's save the map, save the map, save everything actually. Then let's go to the landscape mode. And here, if you don't see the landscape being updated, you just need to open a new level and then open the recent levels here, open the secret temple map we had before. And now we can just go here, go to the landscape, and now you will see that I, I can see my layers. This is a very common issue. You just need to close and open the map. So create the weight layers we create before by Pressing the plus icon, clicking here. Let's do it one more time. Okay, now we have all our layer info. Let's try to paint a little bit. So how about let's just go here and increase the painting brush. And I can have something like this. Okay, and I can shift click and this will delete everything. Okay, something like that. And what I can do actually is to create a path for myself. I can just go here and create kind of like a path, something like that. And you know, the colors are a little bit different, so I can change that later. But for now, we can just leave it like that, something something like that. Okay, let's go back to the layer tree to take a look at how it looks like. Apparently, this is like the rock layer. So look, just by painting this once, uh, we're already blending our assets a little bit better so we can just come here and paint the rocks uh, anywhere we want actually and just go here and we can actually paint the rocks here too like if we want it to break put some variation here now you notice that our colors are mismatching like everything feels like it's not part of the same surface we're gonna fix that in the future but for now, let's just leave it like that and just keep painting to take a look at how this one looks like. So this one also, very nice way to paint your environment. Go here. Go this one. Maybe the layer one can be here. And then the layer three here. And then the layer four here. And just by combining all this, you can have something really, really interesting. Now it looks like we're having like different colors for everything. So we need to fix that. Um, before doing that, let's change the blending a little bit because this transition is like it's like a smooth transition, and that's not very natural. Okay. So what we will do is to create a height lerp that we can use to make these transitions a little bit more interesting. So let's add our height layer. We can just go to the landscape here. And remember we had this mask where the blue channel had the height information. We're gonna use that, but we're not gonna use the layer one. We're gonna use the layer two, three, and four. So we're just gonna come here and grab a cheap contrast. Okay. And just like that, if you want to take a look at how this looks like, you can just start previewing the node here. But it's a little bit hard because the tiling is like super small. So uh, just in case if you want to try things out. So what you can do is to put a constant here called, let's just call it contrast. Uh, L2 height contrast. And we can put the same contrast for everything, actually. Height contrast. You can put it like that. And we can put two by default, for example. And then we will rename this like name L2 height. And then we will just copy and paste it here. 
this will be my height contrast again and this will be my name l3 height and let's paste it again create a new name l4 height and if you want to organize yourself a little bit you can just move these things so that when you move this one all the nodes move so let's just do this very quickly it's just a way to organize ourselves we can put this one here there we go so now that we have this we can just go here go to the layer 2 and notice that i cannot have any place to put my height so what i need to do is to go to the index one and then change this weight blending to height blending and now what i can do is put a l2 height and connect it here and then i'm gonna grab the the rest of them l3 height and then the l4 height and now i'm gonna just keep adding instead of weight blend we're gonna use the height blend here and now we're gonna go to the height blend here and then connect this one here and now we have everything connected let's try it out in our material instance so let's go to the content browser go to the secret tempo folder then go to the material instance and now you will see that i have a new parameter here which is the height contrast okay so you can already see what's going on if i put something like zero is like painting with color something like that but if i can put something like one two i can put something like 50 if i want that's a little bit too much maybe but uh you know it it works I can put something like 15 or 10 or 5. it looks like five is a nice number okay or maybe maybe one if you put something like 50 is too much let's try with let's try with five looks like it's a nice blending so now everything looks much more real so what you can do now is try it out paint it here and now we can you know paint the pad here and you will see that there will be like a smooth transition uh but harsher you know you can paint the rocks here and now it will use the height information to paint everything so we can just go here and also go here create like different paths so the idea when you paint these things is basically have a main path for you this main path will help you to uh, identify where is the you know the focal point in my case i'm just gonna paint here i'm gonna enclose this one just gonna paint a little bit here you can see how the height blend helps a lot to paint things more naturally just like that and then i can paint some rocks here and there i can break the repetition if i want okay so now we have different colors for everything and that's not something i want so what i will do is a very quick but dirty change where we can just change the textures instead of using materials so now let's try to fix the colors because if you go here to the unlit mode you will see that everything it's uh it's like different colors everywhere and especially like this green i don't feel like it's working quite well we could change the texture but you know uh let's try to fix the color first so we can go to materials and initially i was i was planned to show you how to change the textures but let's just try to change this in the material so if i go here let me make some space okay we want to modify this one so what we can do it's actually change the hue there is a hue shift here so i can just put the texture here and then there is a hue shift percentage so the l2 i will press one right click convert parameter i will put l2 you shift and i will put zero for now this won't change anything and the next thing is desaturation okay so desaturation will basically uh, put everything like black and white so if i put like zero 
I will get my original color and if I put one it will turn out black and white so I will just go here and just type L2 desaturation and by default I will put zero okay so let's just grab this control C and let's just make some space here control B here let's put the texture here and now we need to change of course the L3 here L2 saturation L3 saturation and then come back here and go to the base color and do the same here let's open up some space control V we can put the texture here and now the saturation here okay a little bit messy but it still works L4 hue shift rename this to L4 desaturation now let's click apply and see how our material instance looks like let's go to materials and then it's a little bit hard to find everything so what I will do is organize this by groups so I will call this um, the L1 okay let's let's try to change the L1 too uh, drag this one here paste and then the texture goes here this iteration and this one will be just change that two for the one this one also okay and now let's just click apply let's see how our material instance looks like now we can change uh, all the parameters here but before doing that let's organize this a little bit better let's grab all this and here in group I will put L1 I will grab all this too and type L2 sorry uh, in the group uh, L1 L2 then grab this ones too and type L3 and then grab the last ones and then go to L4 and let's apply and now everything will be much more organized so we can just come here okay let's save everything and now we can just play with the parameters a little bit let's make some space here there you go so you have the L1 desaturation okay so let's go here so for this one uh, L1 we're just gonna leave it like that and then let's try the L2 L2 will be we have a different shift here okay let's try to make it like uh, a little bit like this if we put 0 it's very green so let's put minus 0 0.02 and that's much better in my opinion it this blends much better the desaturation we can if we put one that's too much so let's try to put 0 0.05 or 0 0.1 well actually we can leave it at zero for this one let's go for for the l4 which is this one the saturation should be like 0 0.2 something like that okay and then the hue shift uh, we can leave it like that uh, we don't really need to change this hue shift for this one um, just the brightness is a little bit too much okay so uh, we could add another brightness controls later okay let's try to blend this one better okay so we need some brightness controls and then let's go to the L3 L3 we will need to change the hue shift to 0 0.01 that's much better in my opinion then we can go to the saturation and put something like 0 0.1 okay and then this one we can just change the shift to minus 0 0.05 and that's too red for me so the more I go here like and put like 0 0.2 0 0.5 uh, it will just change the hue of this so I will just put like 0 minus 0 0.1 and that's too red Min, um, minus 0 0.09 something like that maybe but that's 
actually not much difference so i will just leave it like that for now so i want to change the brightness for this so what i can do is to go to the landscape and add another one here and i can add the brightness let's just make it a little bit bigger press a to add and this will make sure we have brightness so let's come back here press one and convert to parameter l4 brightness okay and this will also be in the l4 now make sure you clamp this so let's make some space here make sure you clamp this value by writing a clamp here so all the values that are above one uh it will be clamped at one and the values below zero will be zero so i can just copy this and let's just make some space again paste click add this one will be l3 brightness change the group here connect this one here let's do the same here very quickly if i can grab this okay let's just move this one here and now we can go here connect this one here and this one will be my l2 brightness and the group will be l2 connect this one here and now the last one uh, we're gonna go here make some space there you go and now paste this and now we can type l1 brightness and this will be my l1 group uh, make sure uh, this one also l2 this one also l3 and l4 and there you go now we can control the basic uh, values of my terrain so i can go to the material instance here and i can change the brightness i can increase it like 0 0.05 for example that's much better uh desaturation not really uh but minus 0 0.2 maybe something like that that's much better now this one is a little bit too bright so i will go here to the l3 and i will change the brightness to minus 0 0.1 so let's knock this one that's the l4 minus 0 0.1 okay and that also increased the saturation for this so let's let's put it like 0 0.5 or 0 0.3 and the brightness minus 0 0.05 minus 0 0.2 that's too much if we put zero it's too bright so let's put 0 1 2 let me 5 okay 5 looks like a decent number Let's go back to this one. Put something like that. And then go back to the this one here and this saturation. Make it more saturated, but also has more brightness here. Just like that. Okay, so now this feels a little bit better, especially when we check it with the lights let's try to paint it a little bit so we can um, you know come up with some ideas here we can paint something here for example okay something like that we can we could also make this one from the for the color of the of the rocks to blend this a little bit better if we want it but let's just leave it like that for now okay let's just paint here and then go paint the Add here and paint again and paint some sand here something like that okay and also if we play here uh, maybe you will feel like these textures are a little bit too big so let's go back to the instance and now we're gonna change the tiling here actually this tiling is quite good we're gonna change it here for the l3 and the l4 much better let's go back here okay let's put like uh, multiply by 1.2 okay 
and then this one we will also multiply one by 1.2 Okay, that's much better so i feel like the scale is working uh much nicer now uh we can actually paste this value um here 0 0.08 into all this i feel like it's a very good value to have so now enough of materials now that we have something to work with um we can start adding some meshes here to decorate our small level. So now it's a good time to add some meshes. So I will go to bridge here and type rock. And by default, I have this sandstone rocks that I want to use. So I will just grab this thing. And how can you decide how to decorate? Well, everything should be like on the uh, helping you to basically point out to your uh, you know your focal point so everything should be like helping you and if it's distracting you from the focal, focal point maybe it's not so much a good idea to put it so we can just put something here something like that and then we can just copy this here like this can rotate around and just place it here like that we can continue to alt first let's start with the big meshes here so we can just come here just like that and what we can do is to control click basically create something like this we can actually move it like this and we can add more things for example we can add this one okay we can add this boulder let's add the nanite version let's come back here let's just put this one here it's like that let's check the colors it's, it's working fine okay so this rocks will help you to basically uh, blend between your environments so you can just come here and then this one can just do something like this, okay? Yeah, something something like that. I can just put it here. And just like that, you have some boulder rocks, okay? Uh, let's grab some smaller ones. Um, for example, something like this. Actually, not this one, but we can grab this nanite small rocks. We can just place them here, okay? So we can decorate our environment like you have something like it's small, something that is big, something that is medium size, something like that. It is much better to decorate it by using these principles, just by, you know, um, preparing the meshes, uh, prepare to wait a little bit until these meshes are ready. Okay. This ones are kind of like changing, morphing into a into a better version of uh, of itself, something like that. Okay, so let's let's grab this one and let's just duplicate it, and we can just change the size of this, put it here, just like this. And what do you want to find? Is like some kind of interesting silhouette here. I find like. This one could work, uh, at least from some angles. Here you will need uh, some help. So let's just rotate this and s scale it. Let's just put it here, something like that. And then we can do the same here. We can just copy this and put it here in position. There you go. Let's copy here our small little rock here and we can place it here always putting some small elements after the big ones help you a lot to sell the idea that this environment is alive remember that we want to tell the player that this statue is huge 
So we need to add all the small little details possible, such as these rocks, for example. Uh, you want to add them like this. Otherwise, it will be very hard for the player to know that the scale of this thing. Okay, we all always need some references. Okay, so uh, looks like we're using Nanite into all of this. So it's a good time to create some presets. So let's go here, save everything. And let me hide uh, by pressing H, let me hide everything. So what I will do is choose all this by pressing Control and click. I will just click here, click here, click here, and click here. Uh, let me make sure I have everything and looks like I do. And now that I have this, I can right click here, go to level and then create pack level actor. And what I have here, it's basically a preset. Uh, I could use a ste external actors if I wanted. Uh, I can put the pivot point in the center and the minimum C axis and I can just press OK. And then I will need a folder. So I will call this folder mass and I will rename this like mass rock 01. And then a blueprint folder, I will right click, create a new folder called blueprint. Okay, and now there we go. We have our, uh, let's press Control H, we have our preset. Now you see here in the outliner, I have replaced all my static meshes into this asset here. So what I can do now is just come back here and just play with it. And because I can, because I can just put this preset here, you know, something like that. I can basically change it. I can just right click, go to level, edit. And then for example, I want like a smaller version of this one. I can just go here, rotate it around. Let's use the local coordinates, much be much easier. Okay, something like that, for example, we can, we can put it here if we want it. Or this one is also floating, so we can just uh, let's delete this one and let's rotate this, put it here. And this one, because it's floating, we were using like uh, the landscape as the base. Uh, that's not a good idea. So we can just come back here and put it in position here and change the size, something like that. And then you can just right click and then commit, and then all of your instances will be updated. You don't need to decorate all of them every time. So for example, you want to put a small rock here, you can just go back, duplicate with Alt, place it here. There you go. And just scale it. Rotate it, scale it again, something like that. Maybe one more time to make it a little bit more believable. Something like that. Let's group them. Something like that could work. Okay, so now what we can do is right click, level, commit. And now you will see that I have my stones here. So what I can do is to basically just play with this and put it in many places I want. I can put it, uh, it's much easier to decorate like this instead of just using one by one. Uh, it's just not very uh, a good idea to, to use duplicate objects one by one. This is the fastest way to decorate your levels. Uh, it truly is amazing uh, when you can just create just one preset and you can use it just ev every everywhere. It's like here, for example, you can just uh, come 
and put it here and here you can also you can even scale it if you want like something like this and you can rotate it around like that you have some rocks here that are bigger and they're definitely helping us so uh, to close the environment so we can just go back here to the world settings and just move it around a little bit smaller something like that and now uh, we can continue to uh, you know duplicate this one and we can continue to you know create different presets for us we can just change the size a little bit even rotate 180 degrees you know you, you can have some uh, interesting variations if you go here go to edit you can always come back here and edit this so that my 360 version is a little bit more interesting i can just come back here and applicate this just like that and i can go here to some let me grab some smaller rocks if i can find them there you go something like this and i can just alt click I can just put it there. Okay. Can do it again here. Rotate it. Put it here. Rotate it. Scale it. Do it again here. Some rocks here and there. It's always nice to put these small little rocks. They help you to sell the environment. Commit. And now what we can do is to basically uh, keep copying this and put it in another position and just by doing that we are decorating our environment much much faster compared to uh, just putting one mesh one by one uh, this is extremely efficient when it comes to environment creation uh, it's one of the best ways now when you want to position this you want to create like a zigzag so for example uh from here to here to here something like this okay so uh, i don't want to place them everywhere so i want to make sure that the pad is clean okay and of course when i feel some some areas are a little bit flat i can just come back here and rotate this around and just put it there and rotate it again if I want it okay and now I can just uh, let me lift this one like that uh, rotate it a little bit and now I, I can just fill in the gaps of this terrain because I don't really want to show the CG side of my environment and this is very natural to show when you just create a terrain uh, because the terrain don't solve everything but your meshes will help you a lot so you need to use both tools the terrain and this one so let me just put this one here and this by doing this we're already having something here uh, we can just lift this one like that uh, it's very important to come up with uh, some presets for your environment you can see how easy it is to just come here and just place these presets to decorate much faster so now let's add some smaller elements because if we play here uh you feel like everything is very very big uh like this one's you could relate a, uh, a little bit about the size but most of it is kind of big so let's go to the bridge and here I find like this ground um, assets that we can add. Okay, um, I will add this one on the on the background. I feel like I want to use this one in the future. So here I have these three grounds. So what I will do is to basically create some kind of floor. I can just come here and just duplicate this like this and do the same here and let's grab the other one and do the same here put it here 
And this one's so let's not try to scale it. So if we play here, this will be like very, very, very small. Okay, so let's just put something here. Let's drop another one. Okay, so this one too. We can go here like this. This one also here. Let's try to create something like we could uh, just copy this and just rotate it and place it here. And we can do the same here. And the idea is to create a very, very uh, big ground uh, asset that we can use in the future. So we can just come back here. There you go. And now, uh, now we have our ground texture, just like that. Okay. So looks like it's working. So what we will do is to go here and grab everything, this um, rocky ground, and we will just select all this. And because all of them are named rocky, uh, I should be able to select all of them, and I can. So I will just right click, level, create pack level actor, click OK, and then will be my mass ground 01. And then I will put the blueprint here. And now that I have this, I can just come here and just place it here. Now, it wasn't that big, right? Uh, we thought it was bigger. So uh, in any way, um, we can just come here. Now, place it into position. We can put it here also. Rotate it a little bit. We can play uh, a little bit with the rotation like this. Then we can come here. As you can see, uh, we can also create like a bigger asset that we can place to decorate the entire map. Let's do something like this and just click here and move it up a little bit and rotate around just a tiny bit more, just, just like that. So we can have like um, you know, uh, small little details that otherwise they are very, very, very hard to find in the textures themselves. Like this is a very good way to just add detail to your environments, just like that. And let's continue here. Let's just only add detail to the area where we will focus on. Normally, if you have like a bigger environment, you will add the detail over and over uh, in your map. But you know, it's it's the same process. Uh, you don't want to have lines like this. Uh, let me hide this for a moment. You don't want to have lines like this here. Okay, uh, that's very unnatural. You want to have more unnatural lines, such as this ones, for example. We can just come here and just put it like this. And now this is very, very, very irregular. So we can do the same here. We can come back. And here we can just place this here. We can rotate it. Just a, just a little bit. And if, if you want, you can also put it here in these corners. That will also help a lot. We can come here and basically put it here in these assets here. We can just place it here. And then we can use this asset to hide the parts that we don't want the player to see. We can just uh, sorry, I scale this into work coordinates. It's just like this. Make it smaller. Make it just click here and put one better. Let's see. Let's just grab this one and put it here. Actually, that's too much. So let's remove this. We could just rotate like this. 
and then here we can just create this transition like this that's that's the kind of transition you want so we can just go here and do the same here okay and also here we you can just come and blend it a little bit and we can just place this uh these assets where our ground is so we can add more detail here okay let's take a look like this one looks a little bit unnatural so let's connect this one to this also let's do the same here let's connect the ground here there you go this feels much better we can do the same here go and also uh, a little bit here rotate a little bit there you go something like that and there you can just rotate like this now we have a much more natural transition here okay uh we can try and you know what we can do is to duplicate these ones and rotate around and duplicate them again and rotate them and now we can just try to place it anywhere in the the map such as here for example okay and now when we play we will have a much more natural blending like and also the assets this will feel gigantic like if we put this one here for example we can uh, basically rotate this around and put it here and basically duplicate it and just put some rocks here for example like in this area we can just drag this duplicate here and we can just put this one here now all of this will help us to sell the scale of the environment like if I go here with my player now this one will feel really really big because I have these assets that are very very small and I can relate oh like if it's this rock is this size uh, and there are, this cliff is this size then this you know this statue it's uh will be much 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 bigger than what it actually is i mean it will feel bigger even though it it, it isn't uh, it will feel bigger i can just come back here and start putting these meshes here so this will help us a lot to blend the environment so let's grab this one here just like that and do the same here there you go much better uh, you don't want to have this you know uh, harsh transitions you can always go up like this and this will be much better just like that awesome so now that we have this uh, our environment I, I feel like it feels much better uh, in my opinion and all these little details here uh, which we can actually put here also like if we if we want we can just go back here rotate it and put it here try to be very very precise let's here there you go and now we can just uh, duplicate this one something like that and we, we can rotate it if we want and we can do the same here there you go something like that and this will help us to basically blend our environment 
So let's do another pass on the rocks before moving to another topic. Uh, I downloaded this sandstone boulder here and I have them here. So I'm going to I'm going to try them out. Uh, one of them, it's this one, I believe. Yes, this one and this one. So this let's take a look how they look like. And they look pretty cool, actually, if you ask me. Uh, let's try to grab the other one. Like this. They look pretty nice. So let's create another group with this. So I can just come back here and just be, be, basically uh, make this one big, rotate it around, go back here, rotate it, rotate it 180 degrees, something like that. Okay, and we can also, oops, press F to focus, uh, go here, rotate like this, we can put them here, like that, and also here we can, we could just move this one like this if we want it, and then go back here. Uh, we could put it like this, or maybe we can just go back to this one and rotate it, something like that. Oh, we can actually go here and maybe, we, yeah, if we put this one here, this feels much better. Let's just remove this. Uh, let's try to make something big. We can actually make this one like this. Okay, and then we can try to come with this ones. These ones, these ones are uh, quite nice. They are roundy, so we can do the same here. We can start putting these ones here. Go here, just like that. Rotate it. Go here. Change the size, just put it here, something like that. Okay, so now let's try to duplicate this. Sorry, not this one, let's go for this one. We can duplicate this and create another one like this. So this looks okay to me. So let's create a, a new actor. Let's select all this by control clicking. Let's see if we have everything. Looks like we do. Let's right click, create pack level actor. This will be my rock zero two. And this will be my blueprint also. So let's save everything. And now we can just just put it here in position if we want it. And if we also want to, uh, you know, put them somewhere else, we can definitely come here and just put it in position here, just like that. And just rotate it. Rotate it like that. And these smaller assets will help us to sell the scale too. So we can just come here and basically uh, play around with it like this. Okay, and we can do the same here. Just like that. It's nice to have some uh, foreground elements. Like you have the middle ground, you have the background, you have the foreground. Uh, the foreground is always nice to have. There you go. Now we can come here and put some of them here. I can also ch change this mesh. I can I can come here to my boulder. Let's grab this one for example. I can create a new version of it. So I can just go to modeling. I can duplicate this one. Okay. I can accept 
And what this will do is to create an entirely new mesh uh, based on this one. It's basically a duplicate of the asset. And it will take a while because it's nanite. So let's just wait a little bit. And if it takes too long, I will pause the video and, and resume it. Okay, it's done. So now this is entirely new mesh. And how do I know that? If I click here, you will see that this is in another folder. So what I can do now is to go to the FFD modifier, lattice, and by default, maybe you will have five, okay? And this one will be too linear, okay? So let's put the cubic mode and let's put a tree by tree by tree. And actually, this, this one is new, like soft deformation. Like, yes, I want it. So we can drop all these points and move it up. Uh, actually, you don't want the soft deformation. Uh, let's control Z. You don't want soft deformation, just, just like this. There you go. Now you're creating like a pointy cloud. So the same we can do here example we can uh, scale this one a little bit just a little bit not too much you can also grab these points here and make them more curvy i can do the same here a little bit more curve or a little bit less maybe something like that uh, we can exaggerate this a little bit more let's Let's be bold with this, something like that. And then we, we, we will try to bend this a little bit by going here and do something like this. Awesome. So now we have a new asset. We can just accept. And now what we can do is to place this asset uh, because it has some directionality into it, it's like this. Uh, we can place it to guide the eye to point to the focal point of our environment. So what we can do now that this is a new asset, we can just come here. And if it, this is too slow, it's because this one is not using Nanite. Click here, apply changes, and you should be good to go. So this one will be actually pretty uh, pretty fast. Uh, one million triangles, exact. This is the same. T uh, this is the first time I see something like this. One million, and no more, no, no, no less than that. So now we have our our nanite asset, which is great. So now uh, this one is going much faster. We can just go here and just place it like this. And just by doing that. Uh, what we are having here, it's kind of like a line like this. Can go here. There you go. And we can do the same here. Let's grab the this one. Let's grab something like this. Maybe maybe like that. Okay, or maybe something like that too. I don't like like this flat face, so we can just go like this and then go to the local and just rotate it a little bit, just like that. Because I have these pointy things, uh, this is what we call visual language in our direction. Like we have this pointy stuff here we want other things to have also pointy stuff. So this is a really, really nice way to, to do this. It's by manipulating the mega scans to create some new assets, something like that. For example, I can just rotate and put something like that. And this will uh, l make me lose my silhouette, but at the same time, I'm adding a lot of variation here. And this is what I call tension point. So if you have your asset here and you have another one, this 
thing here is called tension and what it creates is the person who's viewing this will stop right here and that's a great thing to have actually so uh, we can add uh, maybe a couple more here in the in the background maybe we can be uh, exaggerate a little bit and we can put it like very very far away show that actually this is a something like that actually it's not working let's just put it here something like that yeah that that will work but it's the same as this one so i'm just going to leave this like this okay uh let's try to put it in another position maybe here and also what i can do is to multiply by minus one to have like a different result i can do the same here multiply by minus one multiply by minus one again and like this i have like uh, i have created like a it's not like a new asset but uh different use for this asset something like this i like this dynamic that i have and especially when i see this uh, just when i see this i see like this line here that is going into this direction here and everything is pointing towards my main objective like this line here uh this line here we lack some uh directionality here uh we're gonna work on that later uh, but for now i feel like this one is working quite well uh, i really really like it so we're gonna keep it like that um let's just try to duplicate one more time to see if there's something else we can do for example like this that's a little bit too much if you ask me yeah uh, let me remove it that's a little bit too much so um just by having that um, we're having a much more unique environment so now that we have our rocks and now it's time to add some man-made elements and the reason i want to add them is because this focal point doesn't have any connection with this this is a very rookie mistake where people just put something like this right like so let's just put a statue in the middle of nowhere right and basically uh, they don't have any other assets to support this decision it's like hey this is just in the middle of nowhere yes that could be the case but in art there is a concept called blending and this is much more believable when we add other man-made assets so what we're gonna do is to go to the bridge and i already download some assets so if i go here to the local folder you will see that i have some man-made elements here i just download these five assets here okay these assets and i also have this sword i don't know if i'm gonna use it but anyway i already have it and I already add it into the project. I just go to Nanite, click add, and that's it. Now, in my content browser here, you have the assets here. I create a collection, okay? So I can have all my assets here in one collection. So how do you create a collection? Well, if you don't see it, just click here in collections. And you see that I have like collections for materials, decals, assets, whatever. Let's just say I want to create a new collection here, here called local collection, type rock, and then we can just come here and just drag this once, just like this, maybe this one. And let's just say I want three. So now I don't need to browse through these folders. I can just create any collection I want. For example, this Roman assets I just had. And then I can just click here and then I can easily select what I want. So what I want to do is to add some assets here. So I will go to my collections, go to my Roman assets, and let's see what we have here. Well, we have a column here. Okay, that that's nice. Let's check the size of this column. So this column is really small, actually. 
and that's okay. We can make it bigger if we want it. Okay, let's take a look at our main shot, which will be like from here. Usually I don't do main shots because I like to see how everything works in the game. But anyway, uh, let's just let's just add this column here, something like that. Just want to rotate around like this. Make it smaller. Let's take a look at the other assets here. Let's see what's this. So this is a small like graveyard. You can just put it like this and here we can just if we want. Let's see what else we have. We have like a trim here. We can just this one we can make it bigger. So we can blend other parts of the environment. For example, I can just come here. And let me go to the details panel and make this one like hand, for example. Okay, and then come back here. And just like that, we're having like some man made elements inside of this. We could rotate around if we want it. Let's see how it looks like. Yeah, it looks like. Uh, embedded and then we will need to change the color but for now it's fine let's try to check for another one okay so this one is pretty handy uh, let's check the size it's very easy to forget about the size when we're working like from this distance so what I'm gonna do here let's go back to our main camera I can just come back here make this one a little bit bigger and I can just duplicate this one here, just like this. And this path will help me a lot. Let me multiply by minus one, something like that, and put it like this. And then duplicate this too. And put it like that. something like that and I can continue to create this path let's try to put something here like if the this path have been um, place it here and the sand just went on top of it, let's put it like this Okay, and we can continue to duplicate this path here. Rotate around. Go to this one. And we can do the same here. And this is a great way to, you know, increase this blending between man-made elements and the nature elements. Just by adding some paths here, we can give the illusion that hey there's been you know some uh, something going on here there were some humans that's why we have this statue and we can even come here and create like a smaller temple if we want I'm not sure if we're gonna see it from distance but it would be very nice if we could you can just come back here and duplicate this one just like that and let's go back here and make sure we can see it there you go something like that let's see how it looks like okay so there is still some uh, I want to put this one here uh, this you cannot really see it from this angle and by the way if you want to change the speed while holding the right click you can use a mouse scroll wheel to to just change the speed by default it's four you can change here but I like to use the right mouse click and then changing the speed like here so I can have more precision here. At this point in our environment, we're just dealing with details that will help us to, you know, blend the environment a little bit better. Let's continue here to duplicate this one. We can put it here.
something like that and you can just overlap this too okay one more here and I can rotate if I want it there you go something like that and just by doing that we're having some small path let's see if we put a stair here uh, we will be able to create something we want let's ignore align to normal you just need to go to the modeling tab type stairs and here click here complete and then you can just uh, let me shift one to have a bigger screen space rotate it a little bit okay and let's let's take a look at how it feels uh i didn't create a bigger staircase so i'm just gonna go here and i'm just gonna increase the number of steps like this and also the width something like that maybe but this looks good enough let's just put it here click and now we have our staircase we can just come back here and let's see if that helps not really not as much as I would like to like we could have some kind of path here where let's click align to normal so we can just you know make this one big we're just trying things out here to see if like we can create some uh, man-made elements here no not really it really doesn't add that much although like I really like the light and the shadow you are getting from here it's really helping to you know sell the directionality of this light that will point into this focal point Let's take a look at some other assets we have. Uh, let's take a look at this one. Okay, so this one is a trim. Um, I'm not sure how we're going to use this one. Maybe we could uh, make it bigger, like 10, for example. And we could, you know, let's, let's go back to Shift 1. There you go, something, something like that. And we can even rotate it like this thing fall from somewhere if you play Elden Ring uh, you know there are a bunch of uh, big structures there that you know uh, they have been falling from here I cannot see it so let's take a look at from this angle there you go something like that uh, let's put another one here let's put the world space go here put it here in position see okay nice let's so the sword I, i'm not sure how we're gonna we're gonna put it like it's really small actually but it can help to sell the scale like we can just put it here there is a sword here something like that yeah it could help okay so let's keep playing with this uh let's keep putting some statues here like like this for example let's see if this helps uh we could put it here for example but you know uh, this thing is gonna block our path here so if we put it here we have a line here and suddenly we stop here so that's this is not a good position where we can put it uh, on the other hand we can try to put it here for example for example here let's take a look you don't really see it so let's just come back here yeah it's really blocking everything so let's go back and change the size to three and what we can do is to actually change the size to two. We can start putting this smaller columns here. Just like that. And we can just put them like this. 
and continue to duplicate them. We can just rotate it a little bit, remove the snapping so it's a little bit natural. Okay, so now we can just move this one here. Move this one like this. And this one we could, we could just leave it like that. We could just move this around. Just like that. And I don't feel like I like the rotation of this. I'm just going to put it very straight. Also this one. And also this one. So we can have some columns here. Let's see what we can do. We can actually make them closer together. There you go. And now we can just come here and put them here. Something like that. Let's see. Oh, it could work, but I feel there is too much noise here. So we're going to move them here. Let's see now. This is too much noise. Let's remove this one. Let's put this one here. And this one we're gonna we're gonna move it there. So we can make some space here. Okay, what what else we have? We have um this one is actually pretty pretty good. We can make something like 20 to make it really really big. And we can just like put it here. It's like part of the, you know, of the rock. Let's see. Uh, let's go back here to the local mode. Okay, and then change the size to 10, maybe. Yes, that was too much. We can just put it here. Something like that. Yeah, something like that helps us to have the, um, you know, the illusion that we have some other constructions here. Uh, we can even go here and, you know, make this one like 10. And we can just put it here. Let's see if this works. Uh, not really, not really working that well. Uh, the reason one is the color; it doesn't blend very well with the with the environment. But this one works better. Like if I just put this one here, I can just move it like this a little bit, and then I can change the color later if I want it. That's pretty nice, actually. I like it. Okay, so now we have more man-made elements. Uh, we can continue to put some of them here. But for me, I feel like I want to take care of the color first. So we're going to do that next. So I think it's a good time to deal with the size of the statue and the color. So we can just try to make it a little bit bigger. To exaggerate a little bit. And we can move it like this. Now this feels much uh, more massive compared to what we had before. Let's take a look. Yeah. I would like to make it like big, but be careful. Do not put it too big like this. Otherwise, uh, it will pass the the frame shot that we had. Another thing I want, uh, you know, I make it big. I'm losing this silhouette here that I had that was helping me to emphasize the focal point. So if I go here to buffer visualization and go to specular, you will see that I don't have it. So make sure you move it a little bit here. And now you will have this tension here between two, uh, you know, two assets. Okay, so now let's try to add some materials. You can find anything you want in Bridge. Like for example, here I have some others that I download. Um, like it could be uh, this one. This one is a nice one actually. Let's add it. Okay, so let's go back here and try to find it. Like we have the damage concrete floor. Let's put it in our collection of materials. So let's put this one here. 
Okay. Now let's see what happens. Preparing the shaders. Okay. So let's let's see if this one works. Let's open this asset. Oh, so it has two two material slots. So we also need to put it here. Okay. So now we have our concrete and you know it's it's kind of working especially from this distance uh, what we can do is to try to change the UVs okay we can go here to modeling and then go to auto UV okay and then you can change the material mode you can put it on checkerboard if you want it so let's see how uh, how this one goes at first okay because if you check the uvs here uh, they are like super small because this is like a scan data and you know that's okay we could use that but uh, maybe we can get a better result with this okay so this is the result we got we can take a look at the uv layout so this feels a little uh, a little bit better to be honest let's go back and put the original material so now it looks like this uh, I feel it's better so we're gonna keep it okay um, we're gonna change the scale to, to 2 uh, sorry not the scale from here uh, maybe we can transform it later but for now let's just click accept it works quite well so let's accept and let's wait a little bit until uh, they change the the UVs of the asset. Okay, so our UVs are done. We can just go to this material instance. And one thing here is that this statue should be more or less the color of this one. Okay, so I just have a bigger screen space here. Now, it's kind of like the same color, but, you know... Usually, this kind of stuff is built with the materials around the environment. It's a very rookie mistake, for example, to put something like this, like it's totally white, and when you check the colors, there's nothing white here, okay? So, I think this material by default is working okay. Uh, we just need to change a little bit the tint. We can just grab this and put this one here. And we can change the saturation a little bit, just a tiny bit. Let's take a look at how it looks in unlit mode. We can put it like this. And look, just by doing that, in this mode where there is no lining, this statue, it's more or less the same color as this one. It doesn't need to be exact, but it's kind of working. So the next thing, I'm going to change the tiling. So let's go back here, tiling. And let's put maybe two by two. Let's take a look at how it looks like. Let's take a look at four by four. Okay, that's that's much better. Perfect. So now, uh, what we can do is to change the colors of this ones too, because as you can see, these ones are very bright. I I don't really want to do that. So let's go back here and put put the color tint to this one. And then we can change the saturation and the value to more or less match the environment. So this one feels much better to me. Let's save it and do the same for this one. Okay, let's actually, let's use the same thing we have here. So if we double click on this, we can just drag the color here and save it here and click OK. And now we will have some presets that we can use. Okay, so that's much better. Okay, let's increase the value a little bit. Then let's go back here and open it again. Let's grab our preset and let's increase the value. That's a little bit too dark. And also this one, not too desaturated, something like that. Awesome. So the last one is this one. We're gonna open the material here. We're gonna change the tint to this one. 
okay let's take a look at this okay so one uh one thing is let's try to change the desaturation a little bit because this one is a little bit too much so let's put something like 0 0.6 as you can see even in this mode without lining this feels much better when you look at it it, it just feels like um it it just feels good when you <laughs> when you watch it uh, like this is art this is not math uh, you cannot just explain everything, but you can use your intuition to feel like some things feel better than others. So, you, for example, here you can just uh, copy this ones. I feel like we can have more of this floor here. Let's just go back here. And put it here. There you go. But now everything is blending much more nicely. Uh, the next thing we're gonna do is to try to give a little bit more love to our hero piece because we're using only one material and that's okay uh, but we can make it a, a little bit better so let's try to do that next so we're going to create a material for this statue we're going here to the content browser go here to my secret temple now as you can see I have a lot of folders if you want to find your folder a little bit easier you can just right click set color and we can put something like a very bright color, like a green. And now it will be very easy to see. So now we can go to materials, go here, change the material to M underscore um, statue, something like that. And then we can right click and create a material instance and call it MI statue. So what we're going to do is to use these textures here that we had, the damaged concrete floor. And then we have the eroded sandstone cliff, which I feel, I feel like we're using one of these here. Yeah, there you go. The sandstone cliff and this one. So by pressing Control B, you will find it in the content browser. So I will just go here to my materials, open the statue folder. Let's save everything just in case. And now what I'm going to do is to drag these textures here. I'm going to drag these ones here. This is basically the one we got. Okay. And I'm going to change it to wrap. Okay. And then I'm going to grab another one here. There you go. This one's. I can just come back here. Okay. And then go here. And now what we can do is to create a material for each texture and don't forget put this one to wrap just in case okay we can go here and put a make material attributes okay put the base color here the ambient occlusion here like we did before the roughness and then the normal here and also like just like we did before we're going to press u to get a texture coordinate m to multiply and one uh to get a constant and right click here convert to parameter and we will call it tiling press one and we we can put it like three by default maybe so let's just go here okay and now we're gonna do the same here we're gonna copy this actually we're gonna use the same tiling okay go here and connect it to all the UVs, then make material attributes and connect this one here. This one goes to the ambient occlusion, this one goes to the roughness, and this one goes to the normal. Now, how can we blend these two together? Is by using a material layer blend standard. There you go. And just by doing that, we can have our base material here and our top material here and we can have an alpha so the alpha in this case it's gonna be a number for now we're gonna click here and then convert to parameter and put something like alpha and just put one here uh, let's put zero for now okay now how can we connect this one it's very easy we can just use material attributes here by clicking anywhere in the material you will be able to see the material properties i just drag this one here click apply save it and now let's apply this material to our statue we're going to just go here 
go to statue. We're gonna grab the MI statue here. There you go. So now it's gonna compile the shaders. It's gonna take a little bit, and there you go. So now we have it. Uh, it's pretty much the same as we had before. A little bit different because of the tint. But anyway, we're gonna try it out. We're gonna go to materials, open the material instance, drag it here, close it. You don't really need this one anymore. And now we can change the tiling, of course, and also the alpha. I can put one. And this will change the material here. Uh, maybe it's a little bit hard to see. Okay, so it's not changing actually. Let's see why what is the reason. Okay, so it's going here and it's going this alpha here and it's going to blend material standard. Well the reason it's not changing is because we haven't really <laughs> put the default value here. Okay, so now if we put alpha, we're going to use the top. If we put zero, we're gonna use the other one. So by using two different textures, you can have like different results. You can see here, it looks a little bit different, especially if we put the tiling to one or 0 0.1, something like that, it will help from distance, okay? Uh, for now, I feel like this is okay. I can just put four here, or maybe three. And now what we will do is to create a texture here so we can, um, you know, uh, blend between these two together. So to add more variation to this statue, what we need to do is to go back to our material. And here, instead of using this alpha, we're going to grab one of these, for example, this texture here. I'm going to copy, paste. Okay, we're going to remove this. We don't need it anymore. Actually, we can put it here and then we can use a rewrap now. Then we can just copy this and paste it. And this will be my, um, I don't know, blend tiling, something like that. Okay, I can just put one for now. And then I can drop, I can grab the blue channel and I can put a cheap contrast. Okay, and I can press one, right click, convert to parameter and call it uh, height contrast, something like that. Put one by default, and then put a clamp node. So make sure no values are higher than one. And then we're just gonna name this, call uh, contrast alpha, and we're gonna put it here, contrast alpha. Connect it here, click apply, and let's try it out. Now, before doing that, let me add some other functionality here, which is basically the tint. We're gonna multiply, okay, and we're gonna put a color here. Uh, we're gonna put, um, let's just say, layer one albedo, and we're gonna put it white for now. We're gonna clamp this. Okay, and then we're gonna control to select all of those and then copy this here multiply and put it here and this one will be my layer to albedo okay so now that we have this we can just apply and let's see what happens let's go into this mode find our material here make it like this and now what we are going to do is to change the color to red for now. Okay, that's one thing. So we can take a look at what's going on on the second material. And then we can increase the contrast, something like 5 for example. And we can change the tiling to the blend tiling to 0 0.1 or 0 0.2, 0 0.3 maybe, something like that. And just by doing that, we're having more color variation into our stone. So what we can do is to put kind of like a bluish, actually, I really like this one. Let me save this just in case. Can just put something like this. You can balance everything by, you know, putting a color that is, you know, a little bit different. From distance, it will look pretty nice. You go here, you can see that it's kind of blending, so we can just 
come back here and play a little bit with the values and here we can just make it a little bit bluish just like that there you go and without being too you know extreme we can have some variation here and just by doing that we are having our blending mode here which is working great by the way uh, let's try to have another tiling like 0 0.4 or 1 or 0 0.1 0 0.2 0 0.3 0 0.3 5 0 0.3 looks like the best number we can use okay so now that we have this our statue feels much better because we are balancing the colors here okay uh one thing i want to still go back to the color here and then this albedo we're gonna change it to this one here okay and we're not gonna exactly put the same one otherwise it's gonna it's gonna be weird uh, we're gonna go here and then change the saturation and the lightness something like that by default it's like this we just want a little bit of a tint uh, that is kind of like the same color as this one so great um now that we have this uh let's add some other um little details into our scene to, because it feels very monochromatic like all these colors are kind of like in the same hue and uh, we kind of balance it out with the bluish tint that the statue has or we can do better so we're gonna keep adding a little bit more details to this so one great way to add details to our scene without much uh, complexity is to add some decals so we can just go to the bridge and let's just go to here and go to decals and here you will see that you have a lot of options of course you don't want to add this ones to this scene also you can you can just find something like for example ground and you will find a lot of details here okay so for me i already have some downloaded i have this this debris i have this okay and i also have a roman uh or ornate here i'm gonna add this one and i already have it here in fact i have all my decals here so let's find a roman and there you go so what we can do is just to drag this thing here and put it here I really like this decal. I kind of use it almost every time I, I have the chance because it just has a lot of detail here. We can just put it like this and move it into position. Maybe you want to put it here. Okay, so now uh, what you want to do is to basically uh, change the color of this one. So let's take a look at the decal here and let's see what we can do with the material instance so the material instance actually don't have like as much properties as the default mega scans material has so if i want to put like a blue material here something like that uh, you will have the mix between the red and the blue colors which is something you don't want. So we want to go for the blue one because all our scene is kind of yellow and blue with yellow will actually blend really well. They are opposites. So if you go something like this and then you go to the opposite side, they will kind of balance it out. So what we will try to do is to change this material, go here to the decal material. Let me put this one here. And now let's find the albedo and what we can do is to do a desaturate node so let's go here and now we can go to press one convert parameter and call it desaturation and let's take a look at how it looks like uh, let's just leave it at zero for now and let's just connect this one here and that's pretty much what we need to do okay so let it compile and once it compiles it will stop looking green there you go 
So now, uh, let's just change this desaturation to one. Okay, so let's change the default value again to zero because you don't want all the decals to actually change. Okay, so now we have the greenish tone. We can just go back here and go to desaturation and put something like 0 0.6. And now that you have done that, you can just scale it a little bit if you want, rotate it, put it like this, and you will have like a bluish tone. So you can just come here and change the blue, change the type of blue you have to something like this. But you can change the overlay intensity if you want. You can put like 0 0.5 or 1. It's 1 is fine actually, or 0 0.9. And actually, you don't want to put it here because there is a shadow. So what we will do is to put it down. Okay, rotate it a little bit, and let's try to put it here. It's like that and. Just try to move it around so that there is like there you go, something like that. So we have like a very bright blue. Let's try to find our decal here. And what we can do is to move it so that it kind of fades, fades away. It's like that. Okay. Now I feel it's a little bit too blue. So what we're gonna do is to open this material again and then change this saturation to something lower, something like that. Okay, so what else you can do with decals? Well, you, you have, for example, like this one, you could put it here. And if it's blurry, uh, you just need to open Unreal and put it again, or let's just, yeah, let's just, uh, let it load a little bit. We can put it here, but it will like overwrite everything. So let's not put this one. Let's try another one. Let's try this one. So let it load. And here, this is a good way to add a lot of details here. Let's go back to our main scene. We can just come back here and continue to add these decals. And put them here. This is a really, really nice blend for your scene. You can put some of them here too. There you go. Very nice. Okay, let's hide this one. This one is a little bit too much. So let's do the same here. And actually what we can do is to make this one very big. And we can try to put it here. And let's try to make it even bigger, like 10, for example. And now you have like your stone, it's full of sand or something like that. Which is cool. Let's try to grab another one. Like this one, for example. Let's take a look at how it looks like when it loads. Looks pretty fine. Can put it here. Can crop this one and also put it here. So it's like blending with the sand. You can rotate. Can put it like that. And also here, this is a very good opportunity to put the decal. Something like that. You can come here and do the same thing. Now you have like sand happening here. And that's really nice. Actually, this is a little bit stretching a lot. So let's not put it here. Just put it back here. And also, these ones, you don't want them here. It's a little bit too much. Uh, let's grab the last one. 
or maybe not this one uh this one we want to take a look at how it looks uh with the damage okay so the damage looks nice i'm gonna actually try to put the damage here we can move it a little bit put it here and then scale it and then you can have something like this you can do the same here you can scale it a little bit a little bit down and then you can put it here and now everything has much more detail here which is great okay so now that we have some decals on our scene and uh, then let me put a, one last more here this is it's just nice to see like some sand on top of these ones and without any fancy material or anything we can just grab all of this and just have a lot more detail compared to what we had before these decals are extremely useful and just go back here there you go something like that and just put it here and now everything blends much nicer and we can do the same here with the sand but uh, i feel like now we need to add some colors into our scene because it still feels a little bit monochromatic like if i go here to my main shot like it's okay but we can put a little bit of more detail so what we can do to balance these colors is to add some assets that have a very highly saturated colors because these ones are very monochromatic we need something to balance the scene so what we can do is to go to the bridge and i found this gemstones pack i already added it so i already have it in my content browser and what i want to find is something like this for example where it has a lot of interesting colors that we can use such as this one and this one okay so what we're gonna do is to drag this one here and these ones are really really small so what i will do is to just make it like 500 or something like that super big and what we can do is to try to place it here okay just kind of like this position just put like 750 or something like that just try to put it in position now you see that the decal it's uh, applying also to the surface you can just go to the properties here type decal check here and you will see that you our decal no longer affects this asset so what we can do is to try to place it here okay and let's take a look at how it looks from distance so i cannot like this but what i need to do is to do a little bit of a punch so what i need to do is to go here or maybe just grab in the properties here open the gemstone pack uh, material and then in the albedo controls i can put the saturation to two for example and now this one is much more interesting so we can do the same here we can just duplicate this one and put it here and just by doing that we're having some colors in our scene now what we need to do is to actually just like we did before by adding some man-made elements here we also need to add some gemstones here so we can just grab this one for example and let's just put it like 50 actually instead of just putting them like this let's try to use the foliage so let's save everything go here to the foliage type and then go to paint and we're gonna drop this one okay so here what i can do is to paint here and you will see that i'm painting a lot of assets okay actually have 60 here but they are too small so i cannot see them okay so what i need to do is to go here and change the scaling from let's say minimum 30 to 50 and let's try it out yeah. Now that's that's a 
good size so let's try to put 75 to have more variation and reduce that paint density okay let's put them something like 10 something like that and reduce also that density here to something like 10 or something like that okay let's put something like 50 maybe too much uh, 15 15 looks like a nice number so we can just paint here and change the size maybe 10 is a little bit too small so we can just come back here and paint this little rocks here where i feel like i could have some details can put them here i can also make that really big if i want it like i can just put them here and also here i can shift click to delete some of them okay let me press f10 to make have a bigger space and this one's i'm gonna change the size press f10 again put something like uh 15 to maybe 35 maybe 10 is better size uh, something like that you can just put them here or we can do the same here from 35 to 80 and have it's like kind of like these frogs uh have fallen here and we can just just paint here a little bit So something like that we can actually add a lot of them for example like this one we can add the foliage type here and then this one too and then what we can do is to do the same here uh, we can change the value to 15 to 75 and this one we can put 15 in the density then let's try it out now it feels like we're painting much more variation here. Let's do the same here. A little bit of color here. Also here. Also put some of them there. And let's change the size to something like 10 to 35 to make something like really, really small. But we can start painting here. There you go. So this is kind of like a place where there is some gemstones here something like that let's just remove this ones i feel like they are I mean, a little bit noise and just put them here and then make some bigger ones something like 50 to 100 and we can just start painting here something like that we can also go here and painting there also here That's pretty good okay so let's take a look at our scene uh let's see if let's go to foliage and go to paint and let's see if there is any part where i feel like this is too much maybe here and just paint here a little bit yeah just like that and shift click here and also the density here we can make it smaller and also the size of this we can put minimum 50, maximum 50. Let's make bigger space now. Okay, so let's go back here. You don't want to put too many. Just, just a little bit here and there. There you go. Okay, so now our scene feels much better. And the reason is we have balanced everything just by adding these gemstones here. If we take a look at this mode, uh, everything feels much more balanced. So uh, with that, we just need to do some final touches and call this scene ready. Now it's a good time to take a look at the clouds and the atmosphere of our environment. We haven't really touched into that topic, so it's a good time to do it so what we can do is go here and type cloud and here you will select your volumetric cloud if you remove them you will have something like this okay which is not really what we want we don't want to remove all of them 
So what you can do, if you check here, you can change like the layer altitude, like depending on what you want, you may m make them higher or, um, or lower. For myself, I feel like uh, the default value of this, uh, while it's helping a little bit to create this line here, uh, I feel like we can have a better position, perhaps like this. And now with this in mind, now we're having a line like this. Let me put this one like this. It's a line like this, like just like this, like ping pong. And this one is also helping. Okay. This one also helps. Okay. So let's try to leave it up at that. Let's try the height. Uh, the height looks like good enough. Let's try this one. And then let's try this one. Okay. Looks good enough. So the next thing is we can try to change the material. So we can come here. Okay. And we could, uh, change this material here, the volumetric instance. Okay. So instead of changing the original one, I will go here and duplicate this one. And now what I will do is to put it here. So now we're not modifying the original one. So what we can do is to play with the values here. We can just do something like this and let's check the noise exponential. Let's put something like 500. Okay, that's too much. Let's go back to 10. Let's check the noise scale. Let's leave it like that. Usually it's good to play with the values that are already here. Let's play with this. I like this one. Let's leave it like that. The noise, uh, we want to leave it at that because if we like remove one zero, uh, we will have too much noise. We can put even five here. We'll be a little bit noisier. That's why this value is pretty good. The erosion scale, let's try to change it to see how it can affect. Like for example, 0 0.01. Or even we can go negative to check the effects. It's okay. It doesn't change that much. The extinction scale. This one we really want to play with. So we don't want the clouds to be like super uh, cloudy. Like the extinction scale. We want to change it. So by default it's 0 0.05. But if I remove the clouds. I will get a natural sh shadow here. Just like this. There you go. But not too much, just a little bit. There you go. The next thing is, of course, the noise height exponential. We can make it like more puffy or more noisy. Let's leave it at that. And then the scale, this value, I'm going to change like this by two. This will make it like smaller. And this one will make it bigger. But basically, uh, it's the tiling so we can put something like two and it will make it bigger and the extinction scale we can decrease it so we can have more clouds if we want okay and now this is a little bit too much so i'm going to the default value here three let's check the albedo map on the extinction so you don't really want to change this ones okay just basically clouds are white so it's just leave it like that and also, uh, we're going to go back to this one to have some shadows here. There you go. Like by default, it's like this. And you will have the shadows here projecting. I don't want that, so I can put 0 0.1 or 0 0.05. Or maybe I can just go lower. Not too much. Just a little bit here. Increase the extinction scale. It's a tiny bit. Just like that. There you go. So now we can play with the values here also. Okay, we don't really want to, to do that. There you go. Also the height. The higher it is, the less shadow it will have, of, of course. So we will going to leave it like that for now. Okay, so what else we can change here? We can also change the atmosphere. So let's do that next. 
So to change the atmosphere, we need to go here to the atmosphere, sky atmosphere. And there are a bunch of things we can change, like the ground radius. Uh, we don't want to touch that one. The atmosphere height, too, that can also change. Okay. And then you have like this one to make it like more alien, if you want. Not something I'm looking for. And then you have this one here, the scattering, which basically, um, it kind of removes the lights. Like if you check here, uh, I like these lights here and I want to keep it that way. So I'm going to just, just something like that maybe. Okay, something like that. And then you have this one, the absorption scale. Of course, like this is like pretty dark. I kind of like it anyway. And we can play with this one. Okay. And then with this one here. And then the absorption scale. We don't want to put this one. And also the luminance factor. We can put it like pretty, uh, pretty blue sky if you want. Like you can put something like this. If you really want it like by by default i believe it's yeah it's white so we can put something like like this something something like that and we can try to balance things out because our scene it's uh pretty yellowish so now what i we can also do is to go, go to that directional light and we can also go to shaft occlusion here in my directional light this touch other properties later and then also we can do the light bloom so with this i can have the bloom here now actually you will see more of it if i just go like this it's always a nice feature to have i cannot like this light actually let's just go again okay Control c let's try to find a nice place for our lights For me, most of the things can work here. Okay, let's just go for the one we choose first. So the next one is, of course, the light in intensity, like the source angle too. And then we can also use the temperature. We can make it cooler or hotter. So let's go back here. We can make it a little bit hotter. Just like this, but not too much. Just want to do a little bit of it. Okay. And then you have the indirect lining intensity. You can put something like five and everything will have like indirect lining. Uh, you don't want to have that too much. So you want maybe two, or maybe 1.25, very subtle. Okay. And then you have the light color. Uh, if you want to go for a little bit more realist, you lights are usually have a little bit tint of yellowish like this. But not to saturate it, just a tiny bit, just like this. It's very, um, it's very subtle. It's not like this, but it's, it's like a little bit like this. Just a tiny bit, okay? You can also change the hue here. Go a little bit orangey. There you go. Then you have the intensity. You can put like one and everything turns pretty uh, black. If we have zero, basically we have no light. If we have 10. Uh, it's the default value, 3.14, maybe give us uh, something nice. This is better to choose in the lining only. With the lining only, it's better to make this kind of decisions. If we go like 10, uh, I feel like this one is too bright. So maybe 7, 5, okay, maybe something like that. Okay, and let's go to, to the advanced. We don't really need to change this one. And... The light shaft occlusion, we can do something like this, but we won't see it because the our sun is there, so don't worry about it. Okay, so now that we have this, let's try to play with the post-processing. So one thing we need to play with um, for the atmosphere is also the fog. So before going to the post-processing, let's go to the height fog. And we already select this one the molometric fog we just need to increase it a little bit something like that and the fall off 
we can make it really harsh or something like like this for example oh sorry let's just grab this one like this like the fog comes from here from the background i can already see it and then this follow we can just play a little bit with it let's just leave the default data and let's just go to the fog density here the secondary fog data it's it's one that is pretty amazing uh, i like it a lot so let's just play a little bit with it and then the fall off just a tiny bit we also have the height offset but it won't really do that much here you have like a nice way to check the default color if you want to change it uh, for me this one is okay because we are using the volumetric fog and then you have this one uh, which apparently doesn't do anything then you have this one a scattering distribution this one should change a lot actually yeah and the albedo uh, you can leave it at zero i believe or at one okay and you just play with the volumetric fog a little bit and this this extinction scale is the one that you, i was looking for so the extinction scale if i put it like 0 0.1 it's almost like nothing but if i put something like this you will see that as i move the light it also goes with me which is great something like that very very artistic if you ask me so uh, i think that this is a little bit too much so i'm gonna uh, decrease the secondary fog density a little bit uh, i don't need it anymore and then this one we're gonna decrease it just like that but this extinction scale is pretty good when you want to just put the light there for example it will look super nice we can even go like this. This one is a shot that I really like. Actually, uh, it's very artistic. But we're gonna go for the for the typical one. Just gonna a little bit more shadows here. There you go. Okay. So uh, now that we have this, let's play with our post processing. For the post-processing volume, I need to go here to the green plus icon and then go to visual effects and then go to post-process volume. Okay, I just drag it to the map. If I press G, I can get outside of the game mode. I'm not sure if you can see it here. Yeah, game view, G. Like with G, you can see uh, how it looks in the game. And if you press G again, you will see all the icons. Uh, maybe I should tell you that before, but anyway. Um, so, the first property we're going to find here in the post process is the unbound. So, this process, its post process is not only applied inside this box, but also outside. Okay? So, let's start. First, the bloom. If we put the bloom, it will look much more artistic. Uh, that's maybe something you want. Also, the convolution bloom is like for cinematics. So, if you want it, also you can do that you just need to put a texture here but for me uh, i find that with the fog it's a little bit too much so i'm gonna leave it like that then the exposure uh, you can play with the exposure a little bit you have like the main brightness here and the max brightness you can just play with it something like that until you find something you want uh, personally, I like the out exposure. It feels like more alive. So I like these default values here. The, the second one is the chromatic aberration. We don't really want to put it that much. So we're just going to find where we want it, like something like this. And then we're going to do something really subtle. Something like that. Just a little bit. Maybe that's too much. There you go. Something like that. So it's a little bit. Okay, so the dirt mask, we don't really need it. Like if you can put some textures here, like uh, concrete, I don't know, like like this one. And you can increase the intensity and you will have like a dirt mask. Uh, I can put dirt here. 
screen dirt. Uh, you really need a good texture for this one. And you put green or something to uh, have a look at that. But um, I'm not going for that. Local exposure. Also, I won't change. Lens, I don't want to change them because I'm not looking at the sun anyway. So typically, uh, you will want them to have them there. Personally, I don't like them that much. The image effects, I like the big net intensity i don't know how to pronounce this sounds very fancy uh just gonna frame everything a little bit just a little bit you know for post-processing you don't want everything to be like like this for example you, you want to be subtle uh you want to be elegant for this then you have the temperature of course but you can change the whole temperature you can make it cooler like this or warmer like this Okay, I like it warmer. Okay, also the tint, if you want. Uh, in my case, uh, I like the temperature we got with the uh, directional light, so I don't feel like I need to change it. Okay, so the next one is the saturation. This one is very personal. If you want more stylized work, you can go for a little bit more uh, saturation in everything. Otherwise, you can go for less saturated colors, something like that. For me, I will just leave it at one. The contrast, uh, usually, if more fantasy, you will have more contrast. If less fantasy, you will have less contrast. But like everything, you don't want to go too low or too high. You just want to play around with, between 0 0.9 and 1.1, maybe. Uh, for me, just leave it at one. The gamma, it's like the light. Uh, I'm gonna leave it at one, too. Okay. Let's go for the shadows. Also have some saturation. We could saturate the shadows. And also change the tint a little bit. Let's just leave it at one. Okay. Um, then the mid tones, you could change the saturation, for example, of the red channel. Okay. Also the green channel, you could saturate it a little bit. This will also help you a lot. Like you can saturate this ones like this. You can there is a lot of control here. And also the highlights, you could saturate the highlights like this. This one are the most lit areas. You could saturate them. So you what you can do here is basically increase the the blues if you want. Okay. Then um we're going to ignore this, and then we're going to skip to the film one. Uh, typically, I play with this too. Like, if I want more contrast, I will go like this. But I wouldn't play too much with this. Like, just a tiny bit like this. There you go. Global illumination, just leave it at lumen. Reflections, lumen. Um, that's pretty much it. Um, a little bit of grain can help. But not too much, just a little bit. And there you go. So uh, now with the post processing, let's go to our skylight. Okay. And now we can change the light color. For example, we can put it blue. And you will see that every, everything will have like a blue tint here. That's beautiful. This is exactly what I want. But I don't want it to be super blue. The reason I want it to be blue is because all our colors are, uh, you know, warm. And this blue shadow will give us, you know, this uh, balance between our warm colors and the, and the cool colors. So let's go here. It's a, a little bit blue. There you go. Something like this. Let's go for a little bit more. There you go, something like this. Not too strong, not too, uh, just a little bit strong in the strong shadow. So let's just go turn it down a bit. There you go. And now we have the atmosphere we're looking for for our environment. Let's take a look how it looks like in the game mode. So from this angle, if you want to take a screenshot, just go here and then go to high resolution screenshot. 
you can take by default is like uh, 1920 pixels uh, by 1080, 1820 by 1080. And if you go higher, let, let's just see how it looks like. If you go like one, I, I had some screenshots from before. You can see how it looks like. And now with all these colors and the bloom looks uh, much better in my opinion. Okay, so let's just leave it like that. And if you increase the resolution, just don't play with it too much. Otherwise, um, you will uh, have a, maybe it will crash. I I'm typically want, use one or two if I really want a super high resolution. This one is already very, very, very big. So if I can't go here, this one will be much uh, higher resolution, which is great. Uh, that's a good way. Let's try to fly through a little bit. There you go. Beautiful. So you can see how all the colors and everything is working to our advantage. And we can play a little bit with the light here. It's like this. Put it something like this if we want. Make everything a little bit bluish. If not, we can just come back and leave it like that. We can also go for the other direction. This one also, it's very, very, very cool. So let's just go back and leave it just the way we had it. Uh, that's, that's amazing. So let's add one final touch to the environment and to make it a little bit more fantasy we can have some floating things rotating around like to give the sense that this is a fantasy world so i'm going to bridge and i'm going to download this arch here i'm just going to download the high quality because i don't need the nanite one and i'm just going to click add and then you have it in your content browser so uh once you have this we will do some modifications you can Grab this one here. Okay, let me move it up. And we're gonna change it a little bit. So first we're going here to the select mode and change it to modeling. And we're gonna use the mirror because we want it to, you know, have the same side over here. So we're going here. I believe it's in the form. Or maybe one of these. There you go, tree modeling. Go to mirror. And here you see that let's remove the snapping it's already mirror so we just need to come here let's drop something like this and just like that we have like a mirror version of this that's great so let's accept okay so this is our new asset let's take a look at where is it uh, there you go so uh this is the new asset so now what we're going to do is to mirror again, but in other direction. So we can mirror here. Actually, we can just come here and then go to mirror again. And this time we're going to maybe up, not up. Let's go down. And there you go. So now we can just move it up a little bit. And this will make sure that our thing is perfectly mirrored so we can just accept this and now this has the shape of like an eye or something i want it to be a little bit more roundy so i will go to the lattice mode and change this by tree by tree by tree go to cubic mode and now i can come here make this one up this one also a little bit up and this ones i can just move it like this and this one also I can move like this. So now I feel like this one is a little bit more roundy. I feel like this works. Okay, let's accept. And now we have our new mesh. Now let's remove the complex collision that we get automatically when we use the modeling tools. Actually, this one didn't apply because it's not a new mesh. So that's okay. So let's just save this. And now we're going to create a blueprint. So here, uh, I'm just going to create it here. It doesn't matter where you create it. Oh, also, I'm just going to 
go here to secret temple create a new blueprint okay just right click here create blueprint class you i was just going to select the actor and call it pp um rotating tank <laughs> something like that i'm just gonna put it here okay so i have my blueprint this is my viewport if you are extremely new to blueprints we have a complete blueprints course for you over three hours you can take a look in our channel and there you will know all the basics you need but for us we're just going to add a component at here type static mesh okay and then we need to specify which static mesh so we're going here to our roman arch we're going to click here and then we're going to click on this one okay so now we have our Roman static mesh. Now what we're gonna do is to, let me delete this one. We don't really need it anymore. And let's place it here. It's like, this is kind of like an angel. It's like holding something. Yeah. So let's put something here on top. So let's control P to open an asset. And you can just type rotating. And you can just grab this one here. There you go. And now what you can do here, it's basically put it into position. Let's make it like really big, like maybe five. Okay, and let's rotate it around. There you go. And let's see which size we need for this. Maybe 10 is a good size. Let's rotate it. Let's use the local coordinates for this. And let's remove the snapping. Something like that. And we can also do the same here. We can just come. And do it like this. There you go. Let's let's move it down and make it a little bit smaller. Or something like that. And this one can also be like here and maybe a little bit smaller like six or seven seven point three something like that and let's move it around here so now that we have our rotating rings we can basically rotate them with blueprints so what we can do here it's instead of using any complex operation and make sure this is unmovable so we can rotate it you can add here and type rotate and you can have a rotating movement component okay click compile and here you will see you have some properties you have the rotation rate and it's rotating in the c-axis so let's play here and instead of play we're going to simulate and you see that it's rotating like this which is fine you know uh we could do that but um i wanted to rotate uh in this axis and in the Y axis, just like this. Okay, so let's go here. And instead of putting 180 here, I'm gonna put 10 here. And I'm gonna put uh, zero here. There you go. And now let's try to take a look. Now this one is like rotating. Awesome. We can also play with this and rotate into different directions. Let's try to play with it from here. Let's move this one and let's try to first, uh, we can try to duplicate this one by pressing out and then making it a little bit bigger. Okay. That could work. But now I'm also going to rotate it by, I don't know. 25 and let's see how it looks yeah I, I really like this one so maybe i can just do the same here i can rotate it 90 degrees and i can scale it up a little bit just like that and let's put it like this awesome and now that we have this we have our rings here and we can basically do the same here where we can, you know, come here and let's go to the work coordinates. We can make it big if we want it. 
and we can play with it and put it like here for example and let's play to see how it looks mm -hmm. like okay so that's a little bit too much so let's delete this one and let's keep these ones here and what i can do actually is to come here rotate everything and make it a little bit smaller let me just delete this one make this one a little bit smaller i can just put it here and i can have like smaller ones so i can just rotate it like this just like that and i can come here rotate it like this and do the same here and this one we're gonna put it like here have something different and this one we're gonna put it like here something like that okay so now uh, let's try to play it now this one I, I feel like it should be in another position so let's just come here Let's play. And now let's take a look here. That's a little bit too much. Let's just remove the smaller ones. And actually, I'm going to hide this one. And I'm going to delete this one too. Play. Okay, let me delete this one I feel like it's a little bit too much let's just have one maybe something like that another thing I can do is to basically uh, change this mesh if I want it but I feel like it's okay for now so um, just by doing this we have more dynamic things in our environment you can see here when I play I have our rotating thing and this one can be like be put here if we want it let's go here there you go something like that let's play again yeah it can have something like that it's like rotating into different directions and we can even go here let's let's go to edit blueprint here and we can change the rotation on the x-axis we can put like I don't know 10 let's see how it looks like it's like everything rotates in the same direction let's just come here okay so uh, just by doing this you can have some pretty nice touch on your environment you can have like some nice detail going on and you can play with this you can make it like super big or super small it really will depend on you so I decided to remove the rings we had before and just put something like this like a smaller one a medium one and a big one to have some kind of cone shape I feel like it's really cool uh, I don't know what you think but I feel like it's give a nice touch so when we play just goes like this now what I want to add is a little bit of animation some rocks like orbiting here inside the ring so we're gonna do that very easily we're just going to the content browser and here right click create a Niagara system select the first option click next and then we're gonna just go for a single looping particle click plus click finish and then we're gonna call it NS rocks floating something like that okay so let's save everything and now let's just click here and as you can see this is the Niagara uh, editor uh, we just need to change some things here if you're new to new to Niagara we have complete beginner tutorial for you uh, make sure to check the link uh, in our playlist but for us the first thing we want to do is if we go here let's try to spawn more like 
maybe 100 okay and all of them are spawning in the same position that's why we cannot see more of them so here in the particle spawn we're going to click plus and then we're going to choose shape location and now you can see what's going on uh, by default it's adding a sphere so it is like all these particles are spawning around this sphere okay so i'm gonna change this i'm not, i'm gonna put a cylinder here okay and now for the cylinder i'm gonna put like a radius of 1000 and the height of maybe 500 something like that so you have something like this now i don't want to render these sprites okay so what i will do uh it's to put some mesh here instead of the sprite render i'm gonna check here and then i'm going to render plus and then go to mesh render and here i can select the mesh i want let's go to the content browser go to mega scans 3d assets and let's just choose this one this one is an has a nanite version here but it really doesn't matter because we're uh, nanite makes uh, having millions of polygons in our scene so we'll just click here and now you will see that i have my meshes here now uh, as you can see all of them are going into the same rotation so let's change this when this particle spawn let's just put uh, initial mesh rotation here let's just click here now you will see that all of them has different rotation but the thing is uh, i also want them to have different size so i will go here to maybe the initialized particle and instead of using the sprite attributes we're going to use the mesh attributes and here in the scale mode we can put a random uniform and we can scale them from one to two for example if we want and if we put unset it will be like the default random uniform we can just put 0 0.5 and maybe one so now we have some rocks here okay now let's try to put it inside our level so let's go here to my secret temple and then drag this one here let's put it here okay so the first thing is that the particle is not updating it's like it only updates from time to time and resets so what i want to do and um, before doing that let me add some rotation so here in particle update i'm gonna put update mesh rotation and as soon as I do that, you will see that all of them are rotating very fast. I can just change the rotation vector and put like something like 0 0.1. And now let's take a look. Now all my meshes here are rotating. But the problem is they're not looping. As soon as they finish, they will start all over again. And we don't really want that. So what I need to do is to go here to... Uh, particle state and instead of kill particles when life has lapsed we can uncheck this one and then we can just loop particles lifetime the next thing i want to do is to go to the system and life cycle mode i'm going to put to self and let's see if this helps so loop behavior once let's take a look at how this looks here looks like here there you go they're not moving anywhere the last thing i want to do is to put this one in the local space so i i can update them so i can just go here then just click here and the emitter should be local space click check compile and now i can just rotate this freely so now let's Try to put it in position here we can just move it around play with this the rotation put it like in the center here and then we can of course uh, make it bigger or smaller if we want and just by doing that we can scale them like this and we can do the same and we can scale them by one or maybe like 0 0.8 and then we can move it to remove some artifacts 
You can also put something like Wang here. And then let's put something here like 0 0.5 or maybe 0 0.65. Okay. And now here we're just going to put something like 0 0.4. And now we have like a Kong here. Uh, we can make something like here. We can duplicate it. Sorry. Lift this one here. Let's Alt and click. And then we can make something like tree. Let's take a look. Okay. So now I have like big rocks and small rocks here rotating around. How cool is that? What I can change here, it's basically the rotation, the update rotation rate. I can just change this one and I can play with a particle. Like I can put some forces here, for example, like the vortex. And this one should be very interesting. Super interesting, actually. We can play with it if you want. In my case, I'm just going to start simulating. Let's play. And look at that. That's pretty cool. So I'm just going to remove this one for now. Sorry, the uncheck this one. But then we were just going to leave it like that. So now when we play, now we have something like this. Pretty cool. So now what we're going to do is to just create some cinematics so we can create a video of our scene to showcase and show it to everyone. So to create a cinematic is very easy. Let's save everything. Uh, we don't need to modify this anymore. So what we can do is to go here and then add a level sequence. And this will allow me to create a level sequence here. Let's go to secret temple and call it like my shot zero one, something like that. Save it. And now as I create it like this, you will see that I automatically has my sequencer here. So let me make some room here. What I need to do is to basically um, create a camera here. And instead of going here and create a camera, I can create a camera dynamically. So I can just go here, create a camera and set it as a current camera cut. And just like that, we have created a new camera. If you see here, you will have like this thunder icon here, this orange one. It means that this camera only exists in this shot. So what we're going to do, of course, is to try first, try to change the properties of the camera. So we can try to change the focal length to something like that, to have more space. Yeah, some, something like that. We can also leave it like that if we want to showcase like more massiveness. Yeah, something like that should be fine. Okay. So let's go back here. Okay. And let's say you want to um, basically start from here. Okay. So let's start from here. And here, as I go down, you will see the transform node. I can just add a new key for my transform. And then I can move this here basically to the end here. And I can just move it and I can look at here. There you go. Now I can click here. And now if I play my cinematic by pressing a space bar, now it's a little bit too far. So uh, too fast. So I will increase this. And if I control and middle mouse click, you will see that I can uh, basically make more space for myself. I can uh, hide this so it can be a little bit easier to work with. So instead I will move this key here to the last part and let's see how it looks like now. Okay. So now we have like our particles here. They're popping out, but anyway, uh, let's just keep going. Uh, so instead of going up, what I want to do is go to this frame 
and basically just keep moving here and then add another transform so now let's take a look at how this feels i can just go here and then i look up and then i have my rocks here awesome so now that we have this cinematic we can just export it and we will go here to render this movie okay and by doing that we can choose the avi as a video sequence we don't need the audio and then let's change it to the ratio we want something like 1920 by 1080 we go to advanced we don't really need to do anything use compression and the default directory should be in your uh, project folder so let's just click here save everything and now you will see that i have a small movie here going on and it will capture the video so i will uh, stop the recording and go back when this is finished to show you where you can find it so one thing before capturing the movie make sure that this one is full here otherwise it won't render right so i will render again and i will come back with them with the movie so the video capture is finished so i can just click on it open with vlc media player or any player you want and you can see the video here it's working now this popping out on the Niagara system, let's fix it because it doesn't look really well on the video. So what we will do is to open our Niagara system and then type bounce here, just like this, and then click here when it says fix bounce, we remove it. Of course, for performance reasons, you want to keep it. But now when I check the camera, it won't really uh, pop out. So in order to test this, let's go here and render this again. Save selected and I will come back with the video. Okay, so my movie is finished. Now let me play this again. And let's see if it works. Get your cinematic and everything. And now you got like your, your rocks here. So I was going to wrap up this tutorial but i thought it was really cool to show you how to track the directional light to have like a uh the sun moving along so let's just go here and type directional light grab it here and i made some adjustments because i wanted to have some time to tweak the cinematic okay this is like my final shot okay you can just play with it just the same way i did it uh, you don't need to follow exactly the same steps I did. But if you want to add the directional light, you can just click here. And then you can go to track, actor to sequencer, and then add directional light. Okay. And now I can just track, instead of tracking the intensity, I can track the transform. And now I can go here and I can track the location sorry the rotation and i can choose which one i want to track like the roll i can either move it like this way but actually the roll doesn't do anything so let's try with the pitch so everything will let's just say we would we want it until here there you go something like that so uh we will start from here and we will track this in zero 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 and when we come here, let's try to find some nice angle. We can just go here and put something like, if we put it something like this, it will be like dusk. We can try. Let's just put like nine. And it will automatically add a key here. Apparently I had my auto key. So now I can just come here. All the lights will change. And when we come here, there you go. So uh, it's pretty nice. If you want to take a look, I can just press like 
F10 and uh, maybe I can play somehow here. Nope. So I will just render this and show you just how it looks like. Okay, so we have our new cinematic. Let's take a look at how it looks like. We start from here and the sun is moving like this and it's starting to get darker and then we stop here. Awesome. So let's leave it like this. Thank you so much for watching. Remember to subscribe if you don't want to miss more content like this one. If you're the type of person who wants to learn more and take your game dev skills to the next level, check the links in the description. You can become a member or visit our website to check some awesome premium resources. I am Mao and I will see you in the next one.